Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So it will. I hopefully have it done by by during next week. So 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 I can have it because I listed them a few weeks ago and and went through as part of my because I I needed to know where the the Syrian keep at Count Larden and and all that story so to speak. So I needed one to the other and realized what the heck I just sit down and 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 go through the list and and try to figure them out so to speak because I had made the notes several years earlier and then didn't get back to it until now so yeah well and i know you had talked about uh turning your heraldry into decals mm -hmm. i'm making the sheets right now oh cool oh, that's pretty awesome cool. yep i'm gonna i'm gonna take them into staples and and have them printed out i got the oh uh, that's paper. awesome you have to show so the, me the what they the, look like the, the deck slide decal oh. paper okay and, yeah. and use their color printer to do it i'll see how oh. it Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, and I'm going to talk to Noble Dwarf and 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 uh, more um, Matthew up there. I think his name is Matthew uh, to to see if um, we can have some posters and then some stuff that people can order prints for for yeah. the Her Heraldry Compendium. So yeah, can somebody shoot me the link to the disc uh, to so I can see the chat? Oh yeah, hang on a second. The public chat. Uh, I'll do that in a second here. Just going to log in. What's up, Enoch? Tim, how you doing? Uh, I'm just getting things set here. Guild Superior will be finishing up and raiding into us. Getting all the. Uh, there we go. Getting Got all, the, getting all the final finale stuff all taken care of. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, where should I put this window? Where should I put that? Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just talking about where I'm putting actual physical stuff here. Oh, physical oh, stuff. No, it's putting oh. windows now. It's the big yeah. thing. Yeah. That too, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad for fancy zones. Oh, that's a godsend. So you hold down, you can hold down shift and you have pre-made sizes for windows. So you just did oh, that okay. way. Nice. Yeah, oh. it's, it's a real, it's a brilliant tool. It's a Microsoft power toy. So I can really recommend it. Then you hold down shift, you create these zones, you know, like, and then you can use, make an app use one or many of the zones. So I have yeah, yeah. this one split up in like six different parts. So that way I can have the standard ones. So I can just use the zones. Yeah. I see the monster manual too is back there. <laughs> oh, in what Joe's background? No, my background. Oh, oh, it's down oh. there on the okay. There you go. I just noticed the stack it's headed back. out for some. Oh, hello. Oh, oh it's not Eric. Hello, how's it going? Still working on his sound. Yes, he's still muted. He's, yep. It's all right, man. No Hi. worries. Yep. Hi, everybody. Hello, hey. hello, hello. Sure, we have a, only a Happy few. Happy virtual Greyhawk Con, y'all. Virtual Greyhawk Con three yeah. finale. Thank you. Yeah, it's been so damn intense. It feels like I'm into a convention for me on this weekend. <laughs> Did you get the PAX Unplugged in Philly? I've done it. I've been there twice. I've been there w uh, twice or three times, but I'm not going Yeah, he was there in 2019. Yeah. I think no, it was in 2018 or 19. My first time going as a director. I think it was, I've been yeah. there both 2018 and 2019. Yeah, we got to talk about that, Joe. I, I, I got Whatever the first year was, I was there. I already got a ticket, and I think I'm not going this year. It's freaking scary, man. Philly is scary. Oh, yeah? <sighs> 
of the many it's always been a little it's on the edge. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I remember, remember I've was... taken a few routes back from certain bars at certain places. evenings and been like, I wonder if maybe I should have selected a different route. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I, I walked around in the evening just because I wanted some exercises. Yeah. So I was walking around several miles and, and people say, oh, it's so dangerous out there. I just walked five miles. I survived somehow. Yeah, my hotel in Philadelphia. Locked to the convention center, so hopefully I can... Yeah, yeah, but for for me, I'm I'm coming in from I live six miles on the other side of the bridge. Parking, walk three blocks with my hands full of my terrain. No hands yeah. free. That's just the stupid. Field uh, Joe, it'll be fine. Gods, yeah, warriors, you know, I, I, that's exactly the situation I was in. I didn't have to deal with a car like Jay or anything. It was, uh, yeah. it was it easy. The basic yeah. I, I quite liked it actually. I really I, the, the convention is like and the many legendary abilities. At least it was. I God only knows what it'd be after COVID, but like it was. Fine, last year. Thighs, you know, it was not. It was not like Gen Con, which I wouldn't say is too big, but it's certainly very, very, very large indeed. Um, and I miss that. There's a size of show that I kind of miss. The bigger than Origins, but much smaller than current Gen Con. Yeah, my that really well. Well, there's like quantum leap bigger than anyone I've ever vended at. So Jay just pulled out a wrong button. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. There's a good audience the there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, it was it was big enough to have Majesty everything. It was a big China. enough convention that everything was there. When the, the, the twice I've been to PAX, it was it was like it felt like a big convention without too much of the problems of a big convention. I have so no idea how much to bring. Young. Be wildly popular that's true that's you, yeah question. exactly yeah. you yeah. might yeah. underestimate or overestimate yeah bringing hosts yeah. of gods and heroes thanks a for the resub and even the monsters what is the worst sell out and, and miss a business or, or bring so much that you mm. damn i need to bring it back again that's what i want to avoid is the bringing back so oh, okay well then if it then, comes then, down yeah. to it i'll, I'll take orders table. and i'll ship them to them i know this i know cobalt press was the only one there last year and they bait out like crazy because they were like the main Ooh, one the only one that was there you know are you selling 5e stuff Joe, or is there it i'm bringing in a bunch of my 5e castle of mad archmages i think that'll do very well there that's i that don't know about how the old bring school, a ton of the book too it's skewed really young demographically or younger i guess i should say demographically so i don't know Whoa, obviously really young people being, play yep, OSI, there. So. Alan will be on when his game is over. That's so. dedication. That uh, is yeah. Amazing. I just finished my game. <laughs> yeah, I finished mine two and a half hours ago, so I got a nap and a dinner, oh. and I'm on back again. Bones. I I got thanks, Bones. Oh, the wow. Ray. Wow. Oh. Hey, thanks, Career. It's good to see you. Thanks for the follow last night on Twitter and uh, and here. Really appreciate it. The Grand Joust of Altamira Champion is gracing us with her presence. Cool bones. Lady, oh, wow. Lady Israel defeated the Black Knight of the Great Kingdom. And uh, Lady um, Bones defeated Luke Gygax in the semifinals, too. All the son right, of Elf. Bones. Yes. That's <laughs> 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 Yep. I will share. I will share. I have the trophy in my hand right here, too. So, uh, yes. That, that is awesome. Prince Smelf. He got to the semifinals. He got to the semifinals being a, uh, a caval you know, a caval a non-cavalier. And that's kind of tough in those, uh, you know, um, the cavaliers have such an advantage with the, uh, being specialized with the lance and all, you know. Um, it's really, but it was all that effort. It only goes to show that there's good luck at that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and you're like, oh, you let the uh, certain undesirables in, too. That was, that was a funny yeah. poster. I could end up, Thank Luke you. responded. That was, that was funny. Yes, I, yeah. Luke's got a good sense of humor. Yeah, he, oh, he, yeah, definitely. He did last night. He was really, thank oh, you for yeah, doing that bike train yeah. rolling. That but I'm just cool. saying, uh, you know, there's certain uh, dignitaries who are not accepted. I hope everyone has exactly. enjoyed this. Yeah. Yeah. Largely person. involved discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Four of our five SD experts are on, everyone. One will be running late as he is so dedicated. He is playing his game right now. Um, he's DMing. Yet every year, uh, it's set that way for Alvin Grow. He's very long. So, thank you all. You are all in here. 
boy, do we have, I have, like, giveaways everywhere up here. Where do you see some of this stuff? I have a great finale show here. Yeah, Curtis Buzz, awesome. I had, uh, let's, I'm gonna be honest, um, I don't like bragging, but I had 150 viewer average over five hours last night. <laughs> it was crazy, it was awesome. The support was wonderful, everyone had fun. Uh, Tim was hysterical during the joust. Um, Luke Gygax was entertaining, Alyssa Fade was entertaining. Oh, it was great. It was an awesome time last night. I really appreciate it. And that bones won, which made it even better. Crazy times. Thank you. Let's go live. One minute before seven. Hopefully, hopefully I, don't, I didn't forget anything. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Vulture Greyhawk Con 3. Uh, Greyhawk asked the experts and finale show that we have every year. I'm J.K. Lurkazumba with me. My partner in crime, Anna Meyer. And I'm going to introduce Hello. four legends of the game here as far as gray hall content goes and they'll introduce and tell you a little bit about themselves and you'll be like wow fantastic <laughs> and uh alan Groy will be on the grow dog he's dming now in the con as soon as their game's done he'll be coming in we'll start upper corner they call him malden oh me oh mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own location in the gray hawk world uh, that's published source Good, Dan Dennis Tetro. Dennis, welcome. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for inviting me. These are always great. <clears throat> um, who am I? Um, well, I'm Dennis Tetro. I'm uh, Malden uh, is my uh, screen name, sort of. I have uh, a, a somewhat popular we Greyhawk website called melcott.com, Malden's Greyhawk. Uh, my claim to fame, I guess, uh, is getting long in the tooth now. A long time ago <laughs> was the creation of the City of Greyhawk updated map for uh, Living Greyhawk. Thanks very much to our uh, accompanying person here, Eric, who got it in there and did all of that. Uh, yeah, it's fun being here. Thanks for inviting me. Dennis is, uh, you know, being a little uh, shy there. Dennis also got Rick Rose on the show a couple months ago which was that like was a great the coup yeah, of this year you know that was just unbelievable <clears throat> uh what a discussion that was thanks blood wild next the Gr greyhawk grognard himself joe block joe welcome hey everybody thanks for having me again um uh my name is joe block greyhawk grognard uh my first uh you might know me from that dragon magazine article about the pomarge i i wrote long ago i run the greyhawk grognard blog and uh, youtube channel i publish a whole bunch of free greyhawk stuff uh, it's all available uh, on the uh, on the blog greyhawkrognard.com i also write uh, uh rules adventures dark and deep and uh adventures like the castle of Mad arch page Amongst other things, and a lot of 5e publications too, uh, yes. which is tons uh, of 5e Greyhawk stuff on the blog yeah. for free. Absolutely, and yeah. thank you, Alex, for linking that too. That was really kind of you. And uh, Joe, welcome back. And we had Joe on Legends, uh, Legends Lord just recently too, and that was a great discussion as well. So, yep. always, uh, um, always, um, I, or was that Gavin? I can't keep track. I'm getting old. <laughs> That's why I got a, I got a new. I think my, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, never my, mind. Doesn't matter. Yeah. My latest emote is the boomer emote, which is even worse than the old school emote <laughs> with the old guy with the cane. So there you go. Yes, because uh, I get busted all the time. Um, Eric Mona, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me back. Um, it's an honor to be here. Congratulations on a successful virtual Greyhawk Con. Uh, I'm Eric Mona. Um, you might know me. I, I'm I'm I quander on the AOL message boards. Uh, I've edited uh, six issues of the Orth Journal. I've been a longtime member of the Gray Talk discussion uh, uh, group, and uh, recently I was a player with Joe Block in his campaign. Um, and I've been playing Greyhawk since I was in third grade. Hmm. 
And, and I've done some other stuff after that. Yeah, that's, like a little yeah. company called Paizo. <laughs> that's that's exactly. the part of my brain I'm trying to get in touch with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but you uh, no, after that, I, I launched Living yeah. Greyhawk. Um, I edited Dragon and Dungeon Magazine. I'm currently the publisher at Paizo. Um, and, uh, but I like to keep true to my roots, and I'm honored to be invited here. Give us 10 seconds of Venarium Vord, if you don't mind. That's right, <laughs> Venarium Vord. He's a... Uh, you win some, you lose some uh, <laughs> in the world of Rally Shaz, the mighty, and sometimes feeble. Uh, you know, I'm going to have some part in the program, Jay. Uh, <laughs> yes, ten I know. seconds is uh, not very long, but I'll take it. And I guess maybe I might be more of a featured player next time around. <laughs> yes, well, we can. Uh, I, think I have a big. I have a big announcement for February before oh, Gary. God. Oh, huge! So uh, I think we can fit for there. Well, um, uh, we'll talk about that at the end. But yeah, definitely. Okay. Eric is legendary Bones, and Bones has played uh, played with Eric. Um, Indeed, uh, Bones. Bones and Darling. Yep, um, mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, thank you back, uh, for coming back again, Eric. It's uh, going to be a wonderful discussion tonight and a fun time. Lastly, so I call him the father of the specialty priest. I mean, that's what I say all the time. Uh, and uh, he's done unbelievable publications over the years. Uh, Mr. Eric Boyd. Eric, welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. This is a lot of fun. Um, well, I was uh, laughing when Eric was talking about the AOL message boards because I used <laughs> to do those all the time, too. <laughs> I remember them fondly. Um, I may be older, though, because I remember starting in Greyhawk, I think, in fifth grade. I'm trying to remember exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I've been a big fan of Greyhawk for a long time. I've had a chance to have a few things published officially, uh, in Polyhedron and Bastion of the Faith. Um, also, uh, I did a few Greyhawk gods in Polyhedron, um, and, uh, also have contributed a couple, uh, articles to the O'Earth Journal as well, way, way back in the day. Uh, and I had a chance to do a fair amount of freelancing for WotC and, second and third edition, uh, including writing up uh, some specialty priests uh, that you can easily steal um, <laughs> from the Forgotten Realms. Yes, Forgotten Realms and Greyhawk. Because I, I brought, I had to make sure I had some great publications here, like specialty priests in Bastion of Faith, Heronius and Hextor, right? There you go. So mm -hmm. one there place, go. one place you can find them. So I will start off with a, 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 a uh, softball question and then we'll open it up and you guys can talk to each other ask questions anna or who, uh, the audience no when's watsy going to publish grail content questions tonight please i can't i just can't because nah. <laughs> I, I, I don't you know because yes. uh, uh, i think uh you know we're getting published content like william henry dvorak's raven's rook which is rook roost with the everything stripped out that's the great stuff that's coming out now right and we're getting some good content that's greyhawk just gotta know where to find it so well watsy is publishing greyhawk names all over the place yeah, well <laughs> we true. True, true. we see vecna we see morden canaan we see everybody in 5e product right that's but true some of the giveaways tonight real quick another Kefir map. This will be the third one I give away that's done in the Cave Geek art style for Free City Greyhawk and the surrounding area. All right. Mm. That print, I will send that out to you. That's one of them. Courtesy of Patrick, Canadian Ancient Gamer. The 2E in Rulebook Edition pack. All It's all a reprint, but, but you get all three books plus Treasures of Greyhawk. All right. That's nice. Um, pretty cool from our 3D print companies from uh gamescape 3d there's the hauntwood scriptorium uh stl bundle that's like 50 bucks uh minimum um also uh the newest one the hauntwood mines bundle as well did that not pop up i thought that did there we go the hauntwood mines bundle as well that's brand new uh the the um, um information for that just came out the the second month part of that hauntwood mines just came out today so you get um and they're, they're set up in the dropbox Gift certificate, a $100 gift certificate to Infinite Dimensions Games, our other 3D print sponsor. So you can get great um, things like the entire setup uh, for um, their their in, uh, Torbridge Cull program, which is those bridges. And you know my arena for the combat, that, and all great things you could get 
that too. And a bunch of gift certificates from Troller Games as well. So we have a boat boatload of things. I think I have nine giveaways for this, and we'll do that at the end of the show. So, yes, uh, Curtis, you already got one of those prints. Yes, you did. And and so Bones wins this last night. Bones wins this jousting trophy last night. And then w won the print last night too. So it's like, wow, well, that was that was pretty fortunate. So we got a lot of great things. Um, no picture. Now, Mac, don't start with Vampire Thromble yet, please. Please, no. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, here's my softball question. I've always asked what your favorite module is. What's your favorite series of adventures or adventure path, Eric? I want for, for that's Greyhawk based. Your um yes, could be the A series, could be the D series. What is your favorite one and why? Who wants to start? I'll start. Temple of Elemental Evil, Village of Hamlet. Yes, of course. Right it's it's the quintessential starting zone for yeah. Greyhawk. Guild Superior Raiden in. Thanks, Guild. I just hit a wrong button there. There goes my first wrong button of the night. I was trying to shout out Guild Superior, and I hit Guild Superior Raiding in from their last game. Thank you. Um, hope you had a great one there. That was our last highlighted stream event. Uh, good to see you all. Thank you for coming in, and let's uh, ask some questions. So, T1 T to 4. Yep. Right. I love T1. T0 to T5, if you... Yes. Yes, yeah, good. That's say, true. You, 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 there, you there's extended some additionals them. to that one. So, yeah. You extended them, yep. yeah, uh, which they are pretty wonderful. The other and three ge gentlemen, or, and Anna, too, of course. Mine's T1 to 5. Is, mine's Temple of Mental Evil, too. Well, yeah, I have yeah, a close I'm second. Quickly. You're going to be... I'm going I'm to tell you what's a close second. The Falcon Puppets? Master. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I think that that uh, Hamlet and Temple of Elemental Evils is a very, very good answer and probably would have been my answer for a long time. But I'm going to cheat and get sentimental and say that my favorite is probably Age of Worms because I got to work on it. Yes. And yeah. I helped to architect that thing. And, and, and in doing so, got to, even though it was like, not really Greyhawk, and that we couldn't say the word Greyhawk. Uh, so well, officially, guys, it's super not official. <laughs> but um, but it was very much Greyhawk. It was as Greyhawk as we could make it, and I think it was fun to pull in some additional element, like to kind of fully canonize Dragotha being part of the. I mean, Dragotha was always there, but really kind of give a more modern role for that Caius as well, um, and kind of. I feel like Greyhawk's been pilfered from so much. I kind of like to have pulled some things in the other direction now and again. And so it was really fun to, to do some of that. And then, like, for me, probably one of the coolest parts of the, the Adventure Path was, like, I really liked the the adventure called The Prince of Red Hand, where we went to Red Hand and the Bandit Kingdoms, and I got to pull in some stuff from, yeah. at the time, pretty obscure Gary Gygax from the Sorcerer's Scroll articles. And there's a lot in there. And that was kind of my love of letter to Greyhawk and to D&D. &D. Um, so it's hard for me to say something else. I know it's corny to be like, the thing I helped do, but... No, it's not. It's really not, That's because I, I, yep. I thought you were going to say Age of Worms. I know uh, I know if James Jacobs was here, you'd say Savage Tide. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But that's cool. I think we all have a really soft spot in our heart for all of the adventure paths we did. But I think Age of Worms is the one where we took what we'd sort of learned and had been handed off to us with Shackled City and really kind of made it our own. So James and I really um, were deeply invested in that project. And, and thus, it's always been really special. I'm sure he feels the same way about uh, the next one. I didn't work on that one quite as much. But yeah, that, you know, I'm proud of all of them. But I love awesome. the middle child the most of all. Dennis, Eric? I, well, I, I mean, there's lots of wonderful ones. A1 through 4, Temple of Elmo Edel, the Giant series, the Drow. I love all of them. But to uh, feed off what Eric said, I also had fun with Savage Tide. Um, and, you know, there was one where we pulled something in that I thought fit perfectly in Greyhawk. You know, when they when they came up with the idea to bring the Isle of Dread in, that was so much fun. That was our um, most brazen theft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just an island. It's not a whole continent or something, right? <laughs> but, uh, no, I really enjoyed that one. And there were a lot of unusual monsters in that one that really got flushed out. So that, that one was uh, one of the ones I enjoyed the most. Dennis? Um. The the Hamlet and uh, Temple of Elemental Evil I thought was quite fun and good. I always thought that 
the once he got into the nodes, it was just a whole lot of too much random. Uh, and that kind of left a bit of a sour taste from the rest of the temple from when I did that. If I keep my rose colored glasses on from my early DMing years, I mean, the giant slash drow series was, I mean, you can't really, that, that that's the first big series of modules that any DM ever ran, right? That was, mo all of us cut our teeth kind of on that because of the time it was out. And so I have a fondness for that, um, but it, they come from a different time. And, you know, yes, there was a lot of awesome material in a 16 page module, but compared to what, you know, modern adventures, that, like the, the, the adventure path stuff, there's just so much more, well, more, <laughs> um, and, and, and fun and developed and background and all of that, that was not possible back in the old days. Uh, controversial answer, I'll tell you, which I think a lot of people don't like it because they accuse it of being railroady, is my players probably had some of the most fun with the Falcon series, actually. Um, I know it's... <laughs> wow. It's fun tag on that, but... but you know, if okay. I were to ask my players, you know, they probably would say that. Um, the My favorite series of modules that I never had a chance to run yet was the Age of Worms Adventure Path. I mean, I read through all of that, but I've never run it. But it it always impressed me as an awesome work of art. I. Uh, so I, one of these days, I'm going to run it. One of these Dennis, days. Dennis, I just, I don't want to disappoint you, but just up front, like there are no cutout buildings that you have to hand assemble. <laughs> Man, those were the days. I hope that's okay. I, I never, I never used the cutout buildings. Oh, okay, okay. Never used them. So, Same yeah, here. so I even forgot about those, actually. I thought that the Falcon series was so bad. We did our second fundraiser fixing it. Remember that yeah. was our second. We we redid well, the Falcon. <laughs> and 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 I suppose I tweaked it a lot. Yes. Maybe that's okay. why they liked it. That's cool. Um, yeah. But it, it was it was uh, it was hard to describe with the group of people that I had there. They had they had fun with it, and then I guess I did tweak it a lot, but. But still, you know, that's still legit. You know, everybody tweaks everything. That's for sure legit. Everybody tweaks everything. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, Anna, do you have an answer to this? And I'm going I'm <laughs> yeah. to have a kiss-ass answer mm -hmm. in a second. I, 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 I would have gone, if you asked this question a couple of years ago, I would have gone and, and, and just like Joe did, I would have said, oh, it's the Temple of Elmet even Homelet Nob and, and that series, definitely, because we have all the fond memories. But I also agree with Dennis on the, once you get down deep in the temple, it just gets confusing and weird to me and and, and I don't like that bit. So I redid that bit of the temple. But hmm. my, they, of all the advent, Greyhawk adventures, the one that have been the most useful to me now is Age of Worms, hands down. I just love it. And wow. now for my Shieldlands campaign, I'm basing it on all, a lot of the, the the lore and the background story of Age of Worms, that's what I'm basing it on. So I love the thing about Kerapdis, Dragotha, and, and, and all those bits, so to speak. So that's part of my my backdrop, so to speak. That, that's the foundation that I'm building on. And, and then I'm using the fact that I use Invaded the area from, from, from Carl Sargent era, so to speak. And, and a little bit of, of Living Greyhawk sprinkled in with Morgan Staller and stuff. So I made kind of a, a deadly mix of the area in it. And so, yeah, I, I really, I had never run the Age of Worms, but I read them carefully. And, and, and I, I love the, the background lore and a lot of stories and stuff and Red Hand and stuff and Siege and stuff. So it's, it's really cool. So that is a basis. So, so in that sense, it's been the most useful and, and the one that I've, I kind of like and have, have had the most use of in depth. It's definitely Age of Worms for me. All uh, right. Mine. <coughs> Aside from Temple. <laughs> Eric did a great job with this. I consider this almost. Ah, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I Come haven't on. got to it that much yet, so we'll see. Yeah, no, I might say that let in a couple years. It's, yeah, look at that. Right, right, right. Yep. It ties in a lot of things. It finalizes a lot of things. <laughs> uh, you, you undo, you undo a lot of the, the, 
rubble are crap. You know, under, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that you really, you know, you go right through the jugular on, and that's what I like. Well, about thank it. you. It was Eric's last chance to yes. repair. Yes. Look at that. It's even up below me right now. And there I only go. wrote like a third of it, so that third had to really do some yeah. heavy lifting in the everything yeah. I'd ever wanted to do with the setting category. Uh, so hopefully it yeah. paid off. Man, Age of Worms. Well, that's really nice, you guys. eBay for three ninety. It's crazy. It's really crazy, um, cost wise. All right, I got one more. I gotta ask it. Okay. Something you'd love to see a third party person or someone publish or do for Greyhawk today. Whether it's classes or a setting book or, you know. Would you like to see someone out there? I want to see the Celestial Imperium. I want to see Beyond the Flaness. Okay. That's what, yeah. you know, I want a full-blown, I want a gold box that shows the Celestial Imperium and Zahindia and all the way out to the Shattered Empire. Would that be a Primus? Would Primus get in on that with the chainmail stuff? Or, or would, would that? Would, nope. That, okay. it, it links all together with the with the Chris Premise stuff. Okay. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good answer. <laughs> Anyone else? I would see, I would love to have a, a deep dive into Dwarven things in Greyhawk. Dwarven huh? culture, Dwarven ideas and, and realms and, and stuff like that. I would. It, it's it's one of these things that, that eludes me a little bit. I haven't studied it enough and I would love if someone had <laughs> given a lot of, of attention and, and love to the Dwarven side of things in the flan. Okay. among other things but that's one of the things that i'm starting to look at elves and i'm starting to feel i have a little bit of a kind of an idea of what i want to take elvendom but dwarfs are and and are still in, in, in half an enigma and i would love to have someone deep dive that so i can dig into it that would be great okay anyone else well, i've got one yeah i've got one so um forgotten realms had a couple products of uh varying quality i really like the cormanthier one not so much the nether old one uh, called Arcane Age. Um, I would love to see a uh, Greyhawk campaign setting set like in the immediate aftermath of the invoked devastation um, when uh, they are migrating into a work for the first time. Um, you're maybe playing like, you know, a work uh, barbarian tribes or, you know, a Sewell Noble house. Uh, making your way into Greyhawk for the first time. I think that would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So funny, Big Mac just put that in chat. At the simultaneously, the same time you said it. Uh, well, I wasn't looking at the chat. So. <laughs> that is awesome. Great, great minds, great minds. Um, but yeah, something like that would be a lot of fun. It would also, you know, I also love history uh, and it would be a way to kind of, um, uh, you know, work out some of the, the early history of Greyhawk that sort of led to the situation we have now you know, kind of like figure out how the, you know, all the pieces got in place that led to the events that we see in the modern setting. So I think that would be fun. Okay. Who still has a not gone? I have not gone <laughs> and I've been racking my brain. I, I think it's weird. You got to pick your poison in terms of the timeline, you know, what and all that. But I, I, I was really intrigued by the um carl Sargent stuff that was like the marklands and i use yeah. the evil and you know the old or the uh, the great kingdom in the form of the undying i would like to have similar depth similar maps similar kind of everything on the back lunish lands on the snow barbarians ice barbarians you know that whole region scarlet brotherhood region i know scarlet brotherhood got its own book but um ko land yeah, Keo Land, you know, just like keep going, go. You know, I, th I thought yeah. we, I thought we were onto a good thing there, you know. And so I, I oh yeah, uh, I guess that's kind of what I want. And in a world where we can't have Carl Sargent write those things, and I don't know what year you would set stuff in or what, I don't really even care. There's just whole parts of the world that have never even gotten that sort of mid-level canonical treatment, and I think it would be kind of cool to see that yeah. um, in some of the and uh, and then. As Joe said, I'm also just like Jones and to get off the map as well. But I've been away from Greyhawk for a while, so I kind of want to like simmer in the like the the center of the bullseye, you know, rather than go off to the sides at least for now. So, so sea of dust adventure path. 
Wow. That's cool. Yep. cool. That's a cool one. Yep. <laughs> Can stop and loan the that. car. Uh, no, uh, uh, right. Uh, what's the What's the place, Amy? What's the place that the little secret? Loan the car. Loan yeah. the car. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, that's a good. That's that would be cool. We have a lot of little little nuggets here and there, and we have from the gourd books and stuff. So there is yeah, a, yeah. A material you can kind of polish, work them together, and you can do some really cool stuff with, with Sea of Dust. Definitely, that's a really good gourd book. I think. Yeah. I'll go to the grave defending. This some before of it went <laughs> over the hip, top and down in the lower plains and blowing shit up completely. Even then that was, was fun still on, on, on mission. Shit. Insane, yeah. like yeah. there is done speaks in all caps kind of way, yep. but uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but was... I do, I like that sea of dust stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, very cool. I mean, I know like a lot of us have our own projects we're working on, but the community really has a lot of uh, has a lot of potential, and, and I think with with more and more damn the torpedoes, uh, thought process on. What's Watsy gonna do, right? <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 Will, Will got his book out. Will got Rook, um, Raven's Rook out. He gave some out during the con, and it's like a, it's a fantastic start, you know. And uh, I, I just Carlos puts out all his adventures, and they're all Greyhawk based, right? Everyone knows they're Greyhawk based. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I, I'm done the same thing that Carlos did in the same continuity that Carlos did. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and it, it's great. The Greyhawk community produces so much cool stuff now that, that it's amazing. And, and in that sense, it's a new golden age of being a, a Greyhawk. Yeah, well, if you file the serial numbers off and yeah. provide a sheet unofficially that puts the serial numbers back. Um, yeah, I don't, you don't even to publish stuff. I want them to open up the DMs Guild. Well, yeah, yeah. And that would solve all the problems. I don't know what the fear is there. They think it's too close to Forgotten Realms. That's my thinking. Wow. That certainly has been a prevailing opinion within that building for quite some time. I, I don't know if it still is. Wow. Well, it's, and I mean, again, you got to think about it in a much broader sense of just like your general customer. You know, I think that yeah. there's a belief that there's the hardcore fanatics, but then there's also the much, 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 much larger group of people who just don't really care or are just checking it out for the first time or whatever. Yeah. And I think the idea is that to that broader audience, uh, Western fantasy with dragons and orcs and elves is the same, whether it's called Dragonlance or Forgotten Realms or yeah. uh, yep. Greyhawk. Yep. Hmm. I, I, it doesn't seem like that would necessarily be the way that the current, you know, they're dabbling, they're putting their toe into more campaign settings and things like that. So, right. you know, I think that there's oh, every the chance. Spelljammer the book okay. is out now, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. they've done Spelljammer. I think they've announced Dragonlance and, you know, yeah. they've done Ravenloft. Mm -hmm. They've done, and it's, you know, when I say they've done them, it's in a very different way than those of us who are in the jaws of early second edition where doing a campaign setting was like 40 or 50 books or whatever. <laughs> right. So it's not that, but, you know, but they are kind of dipping their toe. And when it comes to opening stuff in DM skill, my understanding is did they, did they do that with Spelljammer now? Yeah. I think they want to be able to have it tie so. into a product that they can sell. You oh, know, that would be my sure. guess. So yeah. if they ever did like a, you know, um, uh, adventure archive that does little reprints of a bunch of the old adventures and had some loose, you know, Greyhawk theming. I think that's probably what you're going to get out of a Greyhawk. Well, you've got yeah. Ghosts of Salt Marsh, wasn't that most? Yeah, I mean, and they're right up. I don't to think that they right really, now. but they, they didn't, didn't really put that in the realms. No, I mean, they kind of did, but it's mostly uh, Greyhawk. Well, they also did the Laboratory of Qualish, which is yeah. absolutely Greyhawk. Yeah. yeah. So they, they've done a couple of things here and there, but they haven't opened up. But they've not branded it like this is the Greyhawk book in the same way that they would with like right. Ravenloft or Spelljammer, I guess. Because yeah. is, is you can write you can write stuff for Saltmarsh, can't you? And put it in DM's Guild, but you can't say it's Greyhawk. I don't know. Dude. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't. I don't know either. So yeah. And I tried to stay away from the Watsy con uh, discussion, didn't I? Uh, but that's okay. It's all good. Well, you, you, blended, <laughs> you went straight for it. Well, right the question yeah. of like, what if, what should someone publish? It does kind of loom. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, not, How yeah. official is yeah. this? True, true. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, want I mean, we all know the city of Greyhawk is just a suburb of Saltmarsh. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm I didn't sorry. I just call it the free it city, us. and then I can say whatever I want about it. Yes. Good. Good point. Yep. Anyone else want to take this up before I pass this on to Anna? You got to have a question. 
well yeah i was uh, thinking more um Let's see. Now, now I'm so brain mushed after being on Zoom. <laughs> see how CP hard it is 20, to do yeah, <laughs> three hours days of a time for, for the last three days. But yeah, but I'm I'm more thinking um, in in the terms of now when we have stream games and and my experience. I, I had to tell one minute about I, since I streamed my first game today. I I had the the um, I realized there were two things that I did for the first time that I've never really done before. One was to stream a game. The second one was to run the game con style, meaning a story in four hours from start to finish. And I have to cram the story in within four hours and I have to stream it. And I vastly underestimated one and in difficulty and overestimated another one. And I overestimated how difficult it would be to stream it. And I underestimated how difficult it was to get a story done in four hours. So 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 let's start with getting the story done in four hours. It's when tough. you when you write a module or, or something and you have to get a story in and you only you only basically get like two or three maybe two combats and, and one little other thing. Meaning, how do you cherry pick that? I simply had to cut away 80% of all I wanted to do fairly quickly and realized, okay, just now we just get crash and go straight through to get the story done. And I did it and it kind of felt, it, it felt okay, but it was far from how I would have loved to do it. So, 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 so meaning when you have, all of you, I, I assume, have played or written or or participated in con games and and that style of of scenarios, so to speak. So, so how do you do it, so to speak? Yeah. Who wants to take up that? I never have, so it's all on you guys. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> good, good question. Yeah. I do it. I do it uh, on a, a one or two Saturday nights every month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Jay, yeah, you were an expert at this. Yeah, Don't you do it constantly. Yeah. Because that was, to me, was the, the, the part that really turned out much harder than, than I, I underestimated that part. Because I normally run and when the time is up, then we end it and we continue the next session. So I never had to worry about how much can we cram in in one, so to speak. But right. And I played organized play. And, and there you get, like, Pathfinder organized plays that I played. Thanks, and there you get a lot of these adventures that are, are so technical and really cool. And, and so I realized there is a, a true art to doing that type of adventure, so to speak. And we also see in early Greyhawk content, a lot of it is competition modules and stuff that then be shoehorned or or placed later in, in the setting, yeah. so to speak. But they still have that nature of one little a tap dance between little things and then that, that are tied together and, and can make a neat story in a few hours. That predates streaming by 30 yeah. to 40 years. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll say this. Yeah. I I have to. It has to be a homebrew adventure. You cannot run a one. I can't run a run in four hours live That's stream yeah. in a con. I yeah. can't. But I can run something I've I created myself, and, mm -hmm. and you just got to have a feel for it, and you got to have reference points in it to make it feel like it's a Greyhawk adventure. That's yeah. it. Names, locations, something familiar, something funny like Venerian Vord, mm -hmm. entertaining, yeah. right? I, I mean, something like yeah. uh, Luke Gygax showing up with the son mm -hmm. of Melf. Uh, 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 that gives it the, all the Greyhawk you need for the most yeah. part, you know. And that's I had zombie of... goats in my adventure today. That was <laughs> my, my awesome. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And so, when you turn them, they're cool. unturnable. They 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 go stiff Good. and roll over when you turn <laughs> them. <so. laughs> but I, but I mean, like if you look at Jay's adventures, right? So, so I mean, like I used to play a lot of the RPGA events way back uh, in the yeah. day, and you know they were of differing quality. Some were good, some <laughs> weren't. But um, you know, they, they all kind of follow that real short pattern. And mm -hmm. if you look at, like, if you, it, like, like I'm loving playing in Jay's games Thank and when you. we play periodically here. And, but it's kind of fun sometimes to like stop and take a step back after it's over and say, well, what actually happened, right? Yeah. And there's, there's usually like, I mean, strip all the magic off of it. And it's like, there's usually like two, maybe three elements to his story, right? You know, there's like, three things that happen and sometimes it's three separate events and sometimes it's like two events and there's a one of the events has like a phase one and a phase two to it like you hit the first flush of monsters and then a second you know a second wave comes in as, as sort of the second half right so you can see him doing it but he's got a nice pattern that makes it so that um you it kind of you know fits in the arc um, and then he's got, he's usually not trying to tell too big of a story either, at least, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, like, 
you know, clearly it's a component of a big story in his campaign, but, but, but he's focused in on one thing, like this guy lost a sword in this battle. And now where is it? <laughs> Telegord, stunk Nord, half ogre, <laughs> priest of Heronius. Yep. <laughs> ever optimistic. You forgot his title. The ever optimistic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick, for doing that for Eric Mona, giving him the gift sub. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, hey, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, thank there's you kind of the like a, me a mechanical pattern to fitting it in that short block. It's yeah. usually one tiny piece of story. It's like three uh, encounters, right? And and they either come as like a one part A, part B, you know, or it's like three separate ones. But that's about all you can fit in a, yeah. in a, in a four yeah. hour block. Mm -hmm. uh, and to note that I, I had to extend that. We started six o'clock on those Saturdays. I started seven and it wasn't enough time. So that yeah. six gave me a little bit of a cushion there. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a matter of, it's a matter of, uh, and I do the same thing at cons too. Cons are tougher. I'm going to tell you, uh, it's a lot more difficult because at a con, someone's taking that table from you at a certain time. Yeah. Right? yeah. A lot of here, I could go yeah. over 10 minutes. Yeah, or yeah. It didn't so, matter. So, cons yeah. are tougher. Or if you're streaming on someone else's channel and there's a schedule, that, that's really tough. So, and thank you all for the, um, for all those gift subs. Really appreciate it. Anyone else want to uh, take that question from Anna? Oh, yes. thanks. Thanks, Canadian Ancient Gamer. Yes, Patrick is cranking it out. Yeah. It's a great question, Anna, oh. um, that our experts... Uh, for, for, remember, in the A-series, they had two versions in the module, right? One was the competition version, yeah. and then there was like, the expanded one you could use at your home campaign. Yep. Mm. And that, the, the, the competition version was much smaller, right? Like right. half the map wasn't yep. even there. I um, mean, that was a very different era as well. There, it was much more about sort of objective criteria, you know, uh, in these like D&D &D opens and things, you know, did they get, how far did they get into module, you yeah. know, uh, a, a little bit later than the A series, they would have been stuff like you would score certain points for like searching the right stuff or saying the right things or whatever. Um, I think one major difference with an online game, and I, I've, I've been a player in lots of online games but i've only run a couple and i'm looking forward to getting more into that maybe soon but like um you have an audience and even at a convention game your audience is just the players and that's a very different dynamic than yeah. you know 100 200 people in the chat room watching you know they've all got somewhere to be you know <laughs> presumably at some point there he too. comes you know so. you, some in, in, some some gms will like get feedback from the audience live when it's happening i would i'm that's not my style so much but like that certainly is another piece of the puzzle that is unique yeah. i think for the mm -hmm. playing online yeah the grow dog i'm not Alan. sure how to handle that ask me again in a couple of years maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to work it out so yep so i had a great game today at uh, first time and it went very well you didn't have many hiccups or whatever yeah i had no, seven it was players te technically it was yeah i had yeah. seven players and and about 50, 60, 70, about 70, 75 viewers and, and, and chat went wild. So, so, but that part was easier than I thought, but now let's welcome Alan. And Alan Groey. Yeah. And let's, let's have Alan welcome. Tell us, t tell the audience, Alan, we got another large audience about yourself. And then I want to hear about running COR1 River of Blood by Eric Mona. Dear. How that went. Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Alan Groey. Uh, I'm Grow Dog Online. Um, what else? Uh, been playing Greyhawk since I was a wee lad, like the rest of us, um, <laughs> or lass, as the case may be. And uh, uh, yeah, I had a great time. I uh, I ran uh, other people's adventures this time around. So I ran uh, Carlos's, uh, Carlos Lysing's, uh, The Witch Queen's Lament on Friday night in which the characters were sent on a uh, mission of mercy by Igwilv. Um, and then uh, last night I ran uh, the first level of Mar Castle, uh, and the, uh, the characters managed to defeat the terrible Iron Golem. And then this evening I ran a River of Blood. So, wow. It was fun. It was, uh, uh, and that's a relief. Patrick, Canadian Ancient Gamer, and Oblivion Seeker are both commenting that uh, barely they barely survived. Is that true? Uh, it, well, they they had a little bit of issues with the uh, with the Zvarts at the end. So, uh, so for those who don't know, 
for those who don't know River of Blood, it's a uh, it's also a mission of mercy where the characters are uh, attempting to find and rescue the child uh, who's been abducted by these arts from the slum quarter of Greyhawk. And they have nefarious intent uh, to uh, use her in a ritual of unholy and uh, perhaps tantric significance. Um, and uh, they were foiled in their schemes, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but when they come into the battle, uh, the uh, into the caves, so, so my characters, my group, came through and they followed the mill stream uh, stream that runs through the city of Greyhawk up through the uh, through the quarters and traced it to the uh, house of Sir Bluto Sans Pite. <laughs> and uh, and they um, they uh, confronted the Zvarts in their own lair, but uh, they got a little bottled up and uh, the dwarf got surprised by the Zvarts uh, through the sheer happenstance of the dice, as is, uh, you know, the way things play out. And uh, they peppered him for eight points of damage with daggers uh, as he stood transfixed in horror that he was being attacked. And it took a little bit to get the rest of the characters up through uh, into the melee to uh, to proceed, but they did eventually win out. So good was done, and the uh, the Temple of Heronius uh, claimed the blessings of justice upon the the actions of the characters. Awesome! <laughs> Hooray! Very very cool, and it's good to see that uh, you know. We're winding down here, and I, I, just a general comment. I, I'm hoping everyone had great games that they played in and with really good DMs. This was the highest level of sign-up participation for events we've had. So I wanted to say thank you very much to, to the community. I think, uh, you know, uh, very few things got canceled or – I don't know of any streams, that, uh, any games – games that were uh, that got canceled because people didn't show up i think it all went through or some people jock i know alan you had some people jockeying for sign ups the last day or so but um you know it sounds like we had a really good uh it, you know third time around here i think people are really getting used to the process now so you know, very cool so um yeah it's definitely fun the six of you you have a question for the rest of the panel and then before that i'll, I'll throw it out to the audience after that what would you like everyone to ask everyone else about Greyhawk? You guys. Yes, what do we wrong... want to Who's ask that? each other? Yeah! About... Yeah. Um... It's the wrong time. It's after the convention. We all brain mush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, so... I'll, ask a, I'll ask a question for you. Please. Guys. All right. So going back to like the earliest Greyhawk stuff, um, you know, from the Gygax era, what... Um, threads or themes or ideas that never really got developed again would you have loved to see taken into a product and really given the full treatment as if it had been published way back when you know what i mean it, it, like instead of us going down the g1 to 3 d1 to 3 route if they had gone a different way with sort of that first adventure path you know what would it have been i think you can answer that, answer that pretty easy. I mean, yeah what's that joe Castle Greyhawk. If they if yeah. they then yeah. you know started doing Gary's levels back in the seventies, yeah. yeah, it would have changed the game entirely because the in the rule books kept talking about mega dungeons, but the only examples we had were these tournament no, Dark Tower. We had, I mean, mega mega castle back in there from the if Judges Guild was putting them out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, but but we it, were yeah. Yeah. Joe, if that campaign had been kind of like a, a foray based in and out of the castle, and then here's the city that you go to to buy your new stuff and all that, that would have been a really healthy foundation yeah. for the business and for the game to have started on. Great one. And it would have given us that insight into the creator's process that we were always sort of chasing, you know, <laughs> whether, I don't know how useful some of the answers always turned out to be, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think that would have been good. Yeah, I want Castle this, and the city were both promised for so long, even continually mentioned in Dragon Magazine Ooh, back in right. the day that yeah. we all just kept waiting and waiting and waiting for it. And, yeah, we so a couple a couple of sessions ago, I went back to the very first Greyhawk announcement in the Dragon, found it, 
And then <laughs> we, I, I read the entire thing, and it was all war game. It was still war game based. They're talking about the and Joe, you know this from all the publications that came out. And Joe's been doing these publications, but it was funny. It said free city graph box that will be out in 1982. Well, what would it come out? 89, right? 87, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, just the the delays that happened. There were a lot of them. You know, it, it was. Well, they had the miniatures out before they had the the world of Greyhawk, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. The, the minifigs. They, they had like an entire range of <laughs> minifig figures. And with, like I use in his halflings. Yeah, I, evil <laughs> halflings. I still have evil halflings with I use. <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Oh my gosh! Anyone else want to take that one? I mean, that's. A, I have a, one that that I yeah, sure. would like to say that that was one of the missing ones, just like the the Castle of Greyhawk and the Stoic that was talked about as yeah, becoming a product that we never saw, and, yeah. and and I don't know how it must, but but that I would love to see because I love modules that are like source books of areas and stuff like that. That's really my forte. So so for me, a, a Stoic like the the box, the Greyhawk box set, but for Stoic that would have been for me. A, a fantastic product that I missed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, well, so that, we have yeah. we have the original map that was done for that. And okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really sucks. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. We, we need um, to redo it, but but I'm speaking from from the time, so to speak, not from. But yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean the, the the city map, and I forget what it, the city name, name was from the A series. It, it looked like that. Yeah. Um, now. It, given time and the people there, could they uh, written up a really good product with descriptions of of a fascinating city? Yeah, I'm sure they could have done it, but I don't I don't think that ever really did exist. I think a lot of that vaporware. Was something, was, yeah, they wanted to do. They it, were yeah. just talking about it. And, yeah. But it was still something I would have loved if it yeah. came out in the early 90s or something like that. A few years after, that would have been fantastic. It would Supposedly, been Gary's notes still exist on it. Wow. There you, there you Some of them it. definitely yeah. do. Uh, there's there's yeah. three pages of the manuscript that are outlined that exist, for sure. Wow. And they line up to the map that Dennis uh, is uh, talking to. I, uh, and I have all the... I've, I, I got part of the collection of Ed Control's uh, stuff from when that was found on Grey Talk right. back in it like was, 97. And, it was, it and yeah, was you're, you're right in the middle of all me. that stuff, Dennis. Yeah, Ed, Ed sent me the map. That's where it came from. Wow. Yeah. But, but yeah, he, he, would, he had spent a lot of effort tracking down, I think, or trying to track down information about that and was never really successful because I think a lot of it just didn't exist but Rob yeah. swears that the uh the manuscript for Stoink was sitting in Gary's office oh was it, it? Was mailed to him Rob Coots uh, the, yeah within the month before he got <sighs> ousted oh my oh. gosh you the, the the guy who was doing the cataloging of all of Gary's stuff that's Paul yeah Paul, Paul yeah I, I I he he did an AMA and that's what I asked him and he said, yes, it exists, and we have it. Oh. Well. There you have it. So I, so as far as... Publish that shit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, uh, for example, last night when Luke played in the Joust, I know, it, it kind of, I see a little sparkle in his eye. We used chain mail jousting rules for the most part, and he's like, yeah, my, my dad and Dick Jeff Perrin did these, and he knew the strategy. That's how he got all the way to the semifinals. I love seeing that all that old stuff's being is still, you know, you can utilize that stuff still. And that ties into a question from Torlock in the audience. How do you get a new person into Greyhawk today? What do you do? What would you do or what do you do? And some of us are yes. still playing Greyhawk campaigns. Just run a game with them. Yeah. You know, that's well, a, you don't that's talk right, about yeah, Greyhawk. You, you just run yeah. a game and, and hopefully they like it. Do you have like a, 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 a carrot though? I know well, I... for for me, I think it's kind of like the, uh, and this this is an argument in and of itself, I'm sure. But like, for me, AD and D is the pure essence of Dungeons and Dragons yep. in the best, most possible form. And there have been revisions that have made aspects of it better and everything. But if you mine down to that core, that to me is what D and D is. It's the alignment system. It's the base assumption, demi humans. It's the yeah. assumed world of the rules from the first edition books. And so if that, if you buy into that argument, 
then wouldn't you want the campaign setting that goes hand in glove with that Good game? Point. That yeah. this is the official D and D. This is D and D, you know. And so I think that the beginning, and you know, you can always go even earlier, right? But like the beginning thing is always going to be appealing to a certain subset of people. So if you just say, "Hey, we're going to play original D and D," um, this is the you know kind of straight down the line fantasy in many ways but with unexpected elements like crash spaceships and you know <laughs> you know weird cataclysms and things uh that i think is an appeal has an appeal in and of itself so i don't think you have to work very hard i love bringing new people to Greyhawk and all the other st- I, what i do is i target streamers who i think would be a, a, an enhancement to the community like darling and bones and all the other people you know uh and and bring Ed Greenwood. Ed Greenwood's playing in a Greyhawk campaign, everyone, right? Uh, you know, with Eric right. Boyd. Uh, you know, so I, I just think you got to get them excited about something that's that's going on. There's different ways, visual or Anna's heraldry, Anna's maps, right? You know. So, anyone else want to uh, put in some commentary on this one? You are you're you're muted, boy, Eric. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go a totally different way. Okay. Um, obviously, I uh, like the realms as well. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm running it. I'm running a couple campaigns there, and um, one of them is with a bunch of people my age, and one of them is with my son and my nephews and their friends. And the group just keeps growing bigger and bigger. It's all through Zoom, and I think we're in five states now. Uh, and and um, I'm playing that one more free form, like making it up during the campaign session, as opposed to like planning it out ahead of time, just uh, seeing how fast I can go. And um, so they have been playing in a realms campaign, but I, they they wandered through a weakness between worlds. Um, they're tracking down um, in some of the dragon articles and the like, and some of the obscure products. There are various realms products that talk about people leaving the realms to go to Greyhawk. And in some of the Greyhawk products, there's talk about people leaving Greyhawk to go to the realms. And so I use that bridge as a way to have them start in one world, walk through a portal and end up in Greyhawk. So right now they're exploring the city of Inspa and the sun's a different color and the sky's a different color and they can't understand the common tongue. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's interesting. <laughs> That's real interesting. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> I haven't asked the experts question, and I bet we've got numerous people in here who know the answer. I've sort of um, haven't been as close to Greyhawk, you know, now than I certainly than I was uh, um, X number of years ago. Uh, so I've forgotten a few things, but there's these weird connections that make me go, wait, there's something. Aren't, isn't there something in like Fate of Istis or maybe Oriental Adventures or something where like our Asian or monks or somebody from Karatur in Orth canonically? Isn't there some hmm. kind of... Did I dream that? Please tell me I dreamed that. <laughs> I think you did. You dreamed it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Joey, no. I think you okay. did, yeah. Joey, okay. you, you know that, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. Good, thank God. There's oh, a... <laughs> I know, I'm just I'm to muddy the waters on this. <laughs> <laughs> there is something in Fate of Isis that talks about Less character sense. classes going bye-bye or coming and i think monks may have been mentioned in there I, yeah somebody um, rex felix himself the lord of cats oh my god says oriental, says adventures. In oriental adventures it says caratur is in the world of greyhawk Maybe because I, I, i've heard some rumors that he, yeah i i heard some rumors that he was supposed to be placed there and, yeah. and right. then, yeah. then it didn't happen that that's yeah. just that's my understanding like, it's in some of the ads and some of the promotional material but i don't think it's in the actual book Exactly. Okay. It didn't okay. happen. I guess it was someone intended it and then yeah. it didn't happen. That's yeah. All right. Well, I've got a I've got a tricky question following up on that then. In a published Greyhawk product, uh, not like the Wizards 3, which published Greyhawk product did Elminster appear in? Damn. <laughs> That's a great question, uh, there, Eric. Not the Wizards 3, because we had a Wizards 3 show and uh um Ah, uh, he's, he's, he's mentioned, let me not say he shows up, but he is mentioned by name in a Greyhawk product. Yeah. I'm going to say Greyhawk Adventures. That's, it may be. I just, I, I know of at least one place. That's not it. 
Okay. Where uh, it sounds like something Roger would put in Return of the Eight or something like that. It's actually Carl Sargent. Oh, really? Where yeah, from the in, Ashes. It's in Ivid the Undying. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He is friends with Gwydestin of the Cranes. Let's see. Oh, uh, uh, wow. Asher, okay. did, uh, let me see. Did you know that? Did you know? Because Asher's uh, uh, the bear is our expert on Ivid the Undying. So, mm -hmm. Eric Marano, Fate of Isis, links to Scarlet Brotherhood, Monks to Caratour. There you go. Fate of Isis. Uh, um, let, let, <laughs> secret. Les uh, Les uh, knows uh, everything. Has Les still got it, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Someone mentioned his monks. In the yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. And, wow, very cool. There you go. Lots of holes to go down here on this discussion. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a, um, a fairly easy one. Uh, I think Pat sixty six asked this. You're going to start a campaign in Greyhawk. Where you got? What year are you going to start it in, and why? I know where I'm starting. My well, my my oh. campaign has just been on a continuous timeline. Correct. I'm I'm one of those DMs that doesn't restart campaigns Good. with new groups. I bring new groups into the existing campaign. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I started folio time back in the 1980 when my campaign started and my, my, my long time, longest time player is actually in the audience today. Uh, but oh, cool. my camp, he knows that my campaign has been continuous ever since. And so, um, so yeah, it's, uh, so wait a minute. So you're Canadian. Why yeah. don't you get Miss Miss uh, um, um, pictured as Robert Wardle? And I always get it then. <laughs> oh, it's the joke. terrain and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, oh yeah, my it's gosh. The game, game table. Yes. Yeah, the, the game room. Because your 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 campaign and mine are almost the same. A year is 40, 42, you know, in that range. And so, what year did you start? Did you start in five seventy, five seventy six? Um, seventy what? No. You know what? I would have I would have to look up my. I actually have a timeline that I did up years awesome. ago. That I'm trying to <laughs> trying to keep continuously update. But um, yeah. let me let me dig into it and get back to you in a couple of minutes. And sounds and good for me. Go on with other things for me, Pat. Because it was cool in the glossography. There was this great story about the Battle of Emerity Meadows. Which was an awesome story, right? Talked about, and they actually had the tactics of what happened in the battle. And we had Village of Hamlet, and it said on the Village of Hamlet, oh, the Temple of MLT was coming out soon, right? Seven years later or whatever, however many years we get that. I was like, we all started like 16, 17 year old humans. We all participated in that battle. So what's that, 569, 570? That's where we started our campaign. Yep. Because it was such a neat thing. Uh, how about the rest of you? Where would you start now, or where did you start? 576. I, I, I restart my campaigns all the time and, okay. and until it's 576. Yeah, I start them I start them in the same way, but um, I'll also intentionally run different timelines that are uh, not just your standard 576. So when I was out in California, I ran a 176 timeline. Um, cool. and completely completely remapped uh, the forested nature of the Flanass hadn't been quite so denuded of forests and things like that nice so it's fun to it's fun to play with different places and different eras it's neat Eric we, before you were here said that he'd love to see a campaign in that time frame early early on even you know yeah uh, I did it up on the shores of the Wyasta Lake um, so that's really nice. cool all right. On my timeline, my very first, sorry, Andrew, Go ahead. my very first adventures that I've got placed from the very first party, which was Alan Derry's party, the Malden's partner from the magic shop, was 571. Okay. That was that was the campaign year that, that they started. Very cool. Um, my somewhat controversial answer is that I don't think I really care. I'll, I could set a campaign anywhere, and it might depend on what type of story I was feeling like telling, you know, over the course of the campaign. If it was let's bang together a bunch of the old modules, I'd for sure set it in 576. That'd probably just be the default because that's that was my air, you know, that's. Yeah. That was my first doctor, you know, 576, so to speak. And, uh, but, you know, I would also maybe like to include some of the stuff I wrote for the game. So uh, as long as it's plausible to use the maps, you know, somewhere in that 20 year range, I, I'm probably fine. I don't really care. Okay. 
Yeah, I would say that it's, um, you know, the, the standard answer is play the adventure in the year that it was written for. You know what I mean? So if I'm playing, you know, N1 is the start of a campaign, then I would put it back in the old box, right? You know, but if I wanted to play Age of Worms, I'd, I'd put it in that time period. You know, it's just, it's simpler than moving it. All that said, um, I don't know that I've particularly done it in Greyhawk. I've done it numerous times uh, in the realms, but you could do it just as easily in Greyhawk. I love taking a, an adventure that I find being kind of random, like, you know, just like the architecture of the dungeon, it, you know, the, it's just like, it was almost written like a convention module. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I love taking a dungeon like that that people recognize and then set it like a hundred years before. And if the players do the logical thing, it would end up being what it turned out to be a hundred years later. So like, you know, if there's a, um, you know, a, a, a pile of rubble, you know, when you run that campaign a hundred years earlier, there's there's something where the players have to break down a wall of stone or something like that. So it, I like it kind of to try to set stuff earlier that would lead to the events that you see in the, the later adventure. So you could easily do that with a, um, like a, uh, you know, a Temple of Elemental Evil adventure. You could play it like at the time of uh, Emerity Meadows. You could do the same thing with the uh, Lost Caverns. Um, you know, you could uh, play them back when um, it was actually her stronghold, that sort of thing. You know, it's kind of fun to take the maps that people may be familiar with and they remember the adventure and you can run them through it again and they can still have a brand new time. So that's fun for me. Alan? No, I agree. I think uh, Eric's, I Eric's played, guidance okay. is okay. spot on. Um, the uh, it, I think it's fun to take those adventures and deconstruct them in that way. And then also, you know, whether you're rolling the time clock back or not, you can use that to also expand the adventure. And Gary build, and Rob and other good designers, build this into the scenarios, uh, give you that uh, inspiration uh, to take the footprint of what's there and add more to it, you know. Where is Igwill's conjuration chambers and massive, uh, you know, hordes uh, of servants that conquered Perrinland? They're not in the Lost Caverns of Sajgan, so they got to be around somewhere. There's a lot of those. New like... adventure path. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask another question because I, we haven't gotten any from the audience in the last minute or a couple minutes or so. So. I'm tired too. Yeah. Give yeah, everyone's tired. Yeah, B, uh, <laughs> BP fun. gaming yep. man, does this weekend have to end? It's been so much fun. Well, trust me, yes, because Anna and I are exhausted. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we yeah we can't go on any yes. longer, but it's been wonderful. Yes, yeah, it is wonderful. More but stuff still. coming too. We got a lot yeah. more coming. So, um, what are you personally most proud of for what you have done in Greyhawk? Give me give me a thing that is your pinnacle that you're most proud of? Mm -hmm. I can answer that very easy Go because it. it's my map. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, your, yeah. your map is legendary. Yep. Come on. Who wants to take that up? Do you well, all I have, have, to say my, have to say my map as well. Yes. Uh, With this map? But, the the, Greece, the Greyhawk City oh, map? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty proud just overall of my website as well. I mean, there's just mm -hmm. so much stuff that's on there that's been built up over the years. You have the only website, Malden. Right? You, it's like ah, the, there are others. The web ring yeah. disappeared in 1999, yeah, 2000, right? You know, so. The web ring. Yes. Yes. The web ring. I love yeah. the web ring. Who else was on that it? web ring? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the um, Kikumi's. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hootie, Hooties was I, I on did, there, right? Yeah. At one point, yeah. hey, Codex at one point, was on there. Codex, yeah. At one point, the Greyhawk web ring was over 120 sites. Yeah. Oh, wow. and, I think and my it just, earliest sites they all, were on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Rick some Miller of the was early on things Dude that I wonder what happened, too, is like Linda Kakamu had, yeah. had a yeah. website. She had all the heraldry on there. She had all the heraldry. Yeah, I mean, there was so many, so much material back in those days. That almost all of those sites disappeared. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many of them were ever archived. I suppose the internet archive.org would, you know, the Wayback Machine's got some of it, but that's n notoriously spotty for some of those things. But... There might be copies on, on the Citadel, on the University of Michigan's. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well. 
Eric, do you know anything about that? <laughs> I don't. Not a <laughs> Imagine not. So uh, we got four people still to answer this. We only have two out of six. Could you repeat the question? What are you most proud of in your oh, Greyhawk yeah, accomplishments? Right. Oh, mine's easy. It, it's, I was going to say, like, no, it's not that. And it's not, not that, the yeah. four part Darlene sort of style map. That it's just Robert creating yes. living um, Greyhawk. Yep. It's mm -hmm. creating living Greyhawk. Okay, yeah, that, that's the, that exposed Greyhawk to tens yeah. of thousands. Yes, of it did. Absolutely. And, you know, stuck with Great it. one. So Absolutely. Just in terms yep. of evangelism, I think it's got to be creating living Greyhawk. <laughs> nice. Joe? I got a. I, of stuff that I already have created, I think finishing those um, State of the World of Greyhawk articles, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I rounded out the rest of the finesse, you know, with, with events that are going on and this country did this and that I personally, it assuaged my OCD that it hadn't been done. So I, I got to finish those off that, that, that I like most, but right now what I'm working on now, my armies of Greyhawk where I'm going to start running miniature games at conventions that I think has the potential to be the thing I'm going to be proud, most proud of. Cause that war gaming yeah. community is still out there. It's bigger now than it's ever yeah. been. Really. Yeah. True. True. Fantastic. Yep. Eric. Uh, me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They've kind of been all over. I really enjoyed the earth journal articles that I got to write way back um probably bastion of faith was a lot of fun to pitch in and just to be clear i only wrote a small amount of that but that was a lot of fun um it's not a small I amount it's I not really a small want amount. yeah it's a small amount uh i really wanted to do uh a faith and avatars for the greyhawk deities oh, and i started nice. doing it in polyhedron um always wanted to come back and finish that someday yeah a little bit right there and um you know so that that that's pretty fun too and then um, I did write something up for, for fun last year. Uh, hasn't uh, seen the late of day yet, but uh, got to create a new Underdark City uh, in Greyhawk. So I'm looking forward to that coming out eventually. Oh, that would be aw that's awesome too. Now, quick story. So Les runs his game, and uh, um, we got uh, what the, the Evil Spine Castle game, and Gary Holden is playing a, a Priest of Hex store. And all of a sudden, up on the Campfire Discord, I see posts. Ooh, what's this spell? Battle arms. Uh, oh, I can. And I was like, guys, it's been in this book for th two decades. <laughs> yep. you, it, just because it doesn't say Greyhawk on the cover, this is like you know what I mean. And so yeah, yeah I was like, come on, man, this is that's it's one of the best publications that was ever made for Greyhawk, right? I know, but oh, last stop. It's okay. Come on, man. I'm just having fun with it. But it's just it's just such a great book. I, I, I will say, even though I play a priest of Heronius, I actually had more fun writing the spells for the priests of Hexter. They were a lot just more busting. fun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they are. They're, they're, it's a great, it's a great book, and, and everyone should have that, especially if you're using a uh, specialty priest. Oh yeah. Yep. Alan. So I think probably the uh, the exposing people to Castle Greyhawk through convention play. So that's, I've been running awesome. running my Good. running my version of Castle Greyhawk or Joe's in the past or Rob's levels or Gary's levels at uh, Gary Con in North Texas for like the last 12, 13 years now. And uh, it's a lot of fun introducing uh, people to the old style of play, what it's like to explore in a mega dungeon and to give them that, that feeling of the mysteries here are just so large yeah. that they're cool and fun to try to explore and figure out and just give them a sense of that, you know, grandeur, I guess, of what that kind of play is. And uh, I think on the flip side of that, the fun thing has been with my kids getting to play Cat, my version of Castle Greyhawk with them. And my now 14 year old son, Henry, has been DMing a solo campaign with me. That's awesome. He's, creating in his own version of South province. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, evil, evil ruins down there. And, uh, you know, I've got a character who's in the druidical hierarchy. So he's got a, uh, he's created a mission for her to, uh, help, uh, go explore, uh, what's, what's causing some taint and some other areas in the, the forests there. And it, it, so that's a lot of fun too. 
So, got a question? Let's roll with this. Get you have a your go-to land that you love to adventure in, and your land that you just hate, hate adventuring in, or or, or doing content for in Greyhawk. Favorite, least favorite, and why? You know, maybe it's boring. Maybe there's no content for it. Anyone want to, Dennis? You can. Get, you should be able to go first on this one as far as your favorite. Well, I mean, for favorite is easy. I just I would have to think on least favorite. Favorite. I mean, my two go-to places that I usually that I quite often start or <laughs> have people end up is uh, the city of Greyhawk uh, and my original city of Melcott. I mean, I've I've had a lot of stuff centered there, and I've had multiple groups who've. I just started there or ended up there somehow and doing stuff. Uh, and uh, I mean, we we used to joke all the time on the old Great Talk channel that or that, you know, someday I'll create the city of Melcott boxed set. But <laughs> there's a I have a lot of material, a file folder filled with <coughs> 150 pages of, of material for just that city and the immediate environs. That, that So because I have all of that built-in material, it's easy when I get a new group to throw them into something that I don't have to spend a lot of time preparing because I've been working on it for decades, right? Least favorite, geez, I guess all of the places that I've never sent my players already. Um, I don't know if I've ever play, run something that I dread. Because, and I'm sure the same with all of you guys are the same thing, is you guys are, are DMs that think on your feet. And if I'm in something that I'm like, oh, shit, this is crap, I'll change it as I go along. And we'll, we're constantly, we were talking about this earlier, we're all constantly tweaking material. Oh, yeah. So is there an area that I dread, dread? I don't know if, maybe not, because we can easily change it into something that is not dreadable i don't know is that a cheapy cheap no, way out of the question no, it's, good, it's, yeah. good, it's a good question it's a good, it's a good answer to it yeah definitely who else wants to take that up i could i have a different take on it i don't want to to single out a different a specific place that i love ahead but i'm starting to realize a pattern in in now when i'm starting to set when i've set like at least four big diff, big Greyhawk campaigns in, in my DM career, so to speak, over the past like 30 years. And and what I'm drawn to is not the the iconic evil places or the, the wonderful good places. It's the borderlines in between, these areas that are, are gray and, and have the potential be, because you want a safe harbor or somewhere that the characters can go and, and it's like the old dungeon next to a big city kind of complex. But since I'm, I'm thinking bigger geographically in my campaigns becomes areas that are thousands of square miles maybe and and so so now shield lance is my latest love in this sense because it is a, a especially now after the iusian invasion and stuff you have the good knights in crit wall and stuff and then you have evil iusians and others out there you have and i thought shield land was boring and a wilderness but then i found out oh <laughs> you have white blue mountains and stuff. It's a huge volcano. It's a thousand square miles of wilderness that we have dragons and all sorts of weird things living. So, so I realize it's right now it's the area that has everything I need for my current campaign. And thanks to Eric and all the works previously on 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 that area, that is a lot of of cool history tied into it too. So for me, it will be Borderlands, where you have both the good and the bad fairly in close proximity, so to speak. Anyone else want to take this up? I know it was a, uh, you know, a general question, but well, I had, a, I had an interesting thought that, yeah, that the question sort of triggered. I mean, the you know, wh one of my favorites, probably spent the most time in the city of Greyhawk itself. It's kind of a obvious answer uh, for me, just based on the way that I've run it. Um, I also did a lot of work on the Duchy of Ernst at one point, so I have a whole bunch of backstory and plot ideas and things there. Um, in terms of the the don't like i think i've been thinking a little bit about this throughout this whole chat actually and and you know i'm going over some of the products that came out that i liked some of the products that came out that i thought felt a little shy of the mark and i think one of greyhawk's most underutilized coolest potential ideas that has never really been much of anything uh, is the Valley of the Mage. And I think it'd be kind of interesting to really explore that and figure out what the deal is. As I recall, the 
the adventures just kind of like and then there's a tower with the, a mage and a dark elf you know, <laughs> that you just, can't get up? into you know yeah yeah it's just terrible um uh just yep. in terms of the rick scope miller's of it. rick miller has he, an entire publication a, for it yeah he's he well he i better a, check it out because oh, yeah. uh, i've been underwhelmed uh by yes. the official yep. stuff and, and i think there's a lot of potential there but looking at like that region and the map uh um uh not a lot going on in Bissell, you know near as yeah, i remember right so it's kind of like it, it's cool to think about what the point of the valley of the mage is what's the agenda of the valley of the mage who is the valley of the mage but also like why is it even important right now what does it matter and i think if you look at a whole part of the map and you kind of go well, there's not really much going on here. That's a real opportunity to get in there and kind of start making up your own stuff. Yeah. So if I had to do a campaign like tomorrow, I might say, oh, let's start looking at the Valley of the Mage because <laughs> it's pretty lame right now. Rick, so I can tell you. Not for Rick's yeah. thing, which I've got. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Well, I'll, I'll, cool. I'm going to make sure, you know, he should yeah. be cool to send it to you. Go ahead, Eric. Awesome. So my latest is actually um, I started looking at the Adri Forest. Um, which always, uh, in the Ivid the Undying era, mm -hmm. um, which to me had a little bit of a Sherwood Forest kind of feel, but surrounded by, you know, demons. Um, but, you know, it, it'll be interesting. So, but I'm going to go on a slight tangent here. So in many, many Greyhawk products, there's been this suggestion that there are multiple worlds, right? Kind of like Marvel's multiverse. Like, you know, Q1 had, you could go to multiple worlds. There are demi planes, and so I've always just played it as if the realms and Greyhawk are just two worlds in a set of prime material worlds, and that you ought to be able to move between them, and that there is some histories linking them. And so the one I've hit on lately is that um, in Avid the Undying, they talk about the city of summer stars, which kind of comes out of left field and isn't necessarily tied into the other Olven. Um, uh history of or as far as i could tell by my reading of it and there's an obscure piece of realms lore which is you know, everybody's heard of myth draner but there were other mythal cities and there's one called myth adopar that is also the city out of time and after there was a war thousands of years before it literally just jumped out of time and vanished from the realms and so oh. i've been working on the idea that where did that city go and it is the city of summer stars. So it didn't just vanish, it moved from the realms to Greyhawk and kind of is an alien elven civilization right in the middle of the Adri Forest, or it was, and starting to build up a little bit of that. So you, know, you can pick on some little thread that you find and you're like, ooh, I could do something with this. And then all of a sudden it blossoms into a couple campaign ideas, which is kind of fun. Very cool. I like it. What are you from Alan on this one? So there's, I don't know, there's, I don't think I really dread anywhere in Greyhawk particularly. I mean, I still even like aspects of things that are in uh, the Great Kingdom from Ivid the Undying that, where I don't like animuses, you know, but there's yeah. still a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, but I was trying to think about it. The, uh, the, the Trelonian Peninsula is just not an area I've done a lot of gaming in. Um, and uh, it's just... I don't know that I would dread it. It's just not a place I've really had characters go there. But in a couple games that I played, one this weekend, and then one in our regular campaign, we've gotten up into Radic uh, recently. Um, and that was a lot of fun. But, uh, but yeah, not a lot really going on with the Barbarian Nations or the... Uh, yeah, they seem or, to be, you know, the Chorus Mountains and that, that and stuff. Five shall be one and those, they were like, eh. Right, they were. They weren't. They were. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were real bad. They were real bloody. They were bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, actually, five shall be one is kind of interesting because I was thinking earlier when you were asking the adventure path question. We all obviously know the Gygax adventure paths, and you know, Shackled um, City and Age of Worms and um, Savage Tide. But there were two other kind of adventure paths. One of them was the five shall be one stuff. Wasn't my favorite either. But there is also sort of a Venkna adventure path, if you think about it, kind of scattered across multiple campaign settings. And I don't know if anyone's ever just taken like all the Venkna novels, 
our, our modules and turn them actually into one mega campaign. But that could be an adventure path for you too. Super, super high level by the end of that, right? That's yeah, yeah. Because it, it, with... it goes uh, Vecna lives, then uh, Vecna reborn, and die, Vecna die. Correct in that order? Is that correct? Because the Ravenloft one's actually right. second. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. <sighs> Vecna reborn is going to set you back a pretty penny, I think, as well. It's like, very. Expensive. You can get in re that one. You can get in reprint. Um, yeah, oh, okay. that's. That, I think yeah. you can get that one in reprint because it's a Ravenloft. That wasn't necessarily one. saying that I thought they were good. I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> So, but I would probably rewrite them radically if I did it. Yeah, that's cool though. I mean, Vecna is hot now, especially since we're, we're never the next Stranger Things comes out. Jump on that. I mean, I you know, <laughs> yeah, you know that's even though you know it has nothing to do with Vecna. Period. But uh, anyway, so right, Chris, then... Jay thinks Vecna is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell your wife, Jay. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> she already knows I got issues. So, yeah. Uh, strike while the PR iron is hot, I guess, when it comes on the, to Stranger Things. Yep. Yeah. On, on that Vecna front, uh, Carl Smith, who wrote some freelance work for TSR, started out his career publishing an adventure called In Quest for the Hand of Vecna. And it's this obscure third party uh, scenario. It eventually got, he got a C and D from TSR. Of course. Um, but this was early on. It's like in 1980, 81, something like that. Wow. And, uh, and uh, then it got republished as a module called like the Serpent of Metal. But it's not metal. It's metal with a accent mark or a apostrophe there. Um, and he took out like all the Greyhawk references and stuff from it. But uh, but that would be a, a good, good piece to use as part of a, bringing all the... Uh, Vecna material together at some point. If it could be found and reprinted so people could actually access it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, there's a lot of that out there you're finding. Like, uh, you know, even Dark Druids is hard to find, right? Yeah. 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 Guys, guys reprint that he did for that back in 2014 is oh, out of print now. So. I, where is it? I have, um, I, you know, I got uh, one of Kuntz's, um, here it is. I just got this. There's one, right? I'm going to pop this somewhere. Where would you place this in Greyhawk, Alan? Great King. What is it? Great Karen of the Skeleton King. Uh, right. That's a new version of the first Pied Piper adventure. Right. Yeah. I have Druck Druids. I don't. I haven't gotten Tower of Blood yet. There are the other ones on the back there. So, Alan, are you working with Rob these days? Uh, no. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So. Fair enough. Thereby hangs a tail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same story, different publisher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's see here. Um, all right. Anyone else want to track all that? Um, uh, you know, I don't use eastern side of the map, so that's my answer. Where my least favorite place is. I. But that's a joke. So I don't, I don't know what to do with the nomads, like the tiger nomads, wolf nomads, yeah. rovers of the Baron, yeah. the stonefish. I don't know what the hell to do with these things. <laughs> I, I'm starting to get an interesting grip. I, I have the tiger nomads being more Bakluni, the wolf nomad more old flan, but they, they have the same roots, so to speak. They, they come from some sort of a mixture back in pre-migration days, but they, they, they differ because they got more more differentiated. They the the their stone fists are, are, are the, they're the same same original people the whole way up there, so to speak. And the ones further left are more Bakluni. The wolf nomads stay true to most of their old flan roots. And the one in in the, the stone fisters are the one that got a lot of Sewell influence. That's how I interpret them from from a kind of a yeah that perspective. There's a wealth of cultural information about at least the wolf nomads, of mm -hmm. course, in the uh, novels. <laughs> Your favorite novel. Master Wolf. Exactly, Your favorite I was going to say. My favorite yes. novels. Yeah, uh, read the... Rose Estes? The Rose Estes yes. novels? Yes. 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 I mean, it, sometimes the cultural <laughs> yeah. detail is layered on so thick you can lose track of the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> I remember borrowing a wolf nomad <laughs> cairn, like a, a tomb... <laughs> from a uh, living Greyhawk adventure. I remember using one of those in, in one of the campaign wow. threads that I was doing. But yeah, other than that, I've not spent a lot of time up there either. They kind of seem like they're mostly, like doesn't I use some of them? And like, aren't they kind of 
Yeah. Like they got co-opted like by him and invading hordes, yeah. waiting yeah. to happen, kind of a thing, isn't that kind of a? Yeah, it's yeah. just. I mean, it's it's going to be great for my war game project, but for yeah. role playing, they're kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Tim's Tim's playing in Rovers of the Barons. Tim's campaign. He's got two adventure groups up there, that, and he streams it too on my channel. So we do have some Rovers of the Baron activity going. I mean, that's a cool phrase, Rovers of the Barons. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that their their symbol is a dog. The yeah, rover. That's cool too. Rover. The, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Heraldic yeah. puns now. Who knew exactly. there was a new yeah. front for it? <laughs> but it ties into the Greyhawk tradition of, of word puns and stuff like that, just exactly. in the graphic form. So, yeah. yeah. It took me many more years than it should have to realize that. <laughs> well, so, I guess if, if you're still asking about dread stuff, I guess the part that I always struggled with the most was the um, expedition of the Barrier Peaks and Blackmoor. Not that I didn't like them, but just because the feel felt different and how they keep that coherent in with the rest of the setting without sort of undermining it. So to me, that was always the hardest part there. It, well, it is. You can't have those items run, run, running around in your game. Power yeah, no, armor. No sci-fi, uh, no, yeah. no gunpowder, no dinosaurs, and no sci-fi in my gray hole. <laughs> well, I solved Barrier Peaks by blowing it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's the way yeah. to do it. Now Should I get into a, 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 nuclear, yeah, high a radioactive crater. Here? <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Man, there's laser guns in my Greyhawk for sure. There is. That's oh yeah. Like that. I yeah. used to get in fights at Wizards about that. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. I don't want to get into it, but uh, <laughs> I think Greyhawk benefits from having a wide range of themes and yeah. elements. That is very true. So yeah, you're absolutely. If you the ones you away like. some yeah. of that stuff, then I think it is more susceptible to the argument of like, well, what's the difference between this and any other sort of Knights of exactly. Armor campaign? And so I, I hear what you're saying, and there's definitely been times in my love affair with this setting where I've been like, well, I want to focus more on some of the traditional elements. And certainly we all have players who have no interest in delving off under the edges there. But for me, the edges are really interesting. And, and even the idea of like, well, okay, so Blackmore, but it's not Dave Arneson's Blackmore. So it's like, well, what is it exactly? I think is kind of an interesting, That's good. just lim like, it's just weird. And, and that uncertainty on the edge of the map, I, I, again, I sort of feel is kind of like a benefit. I, I like that aspect. The yeah. setting was intentionally designed so that the stars on the outside was less, you know, detailed. And, yeah, and it's, sure. it's tough 40, 50 years later, of course. But like, I like kind of not knowing some of the answers when it comes to like, yeah. what's the deal with the land of black ice, for example. I don't know, but I, it, mm -hmm. the ice is black and it's spooky and alien and there's nasty yep. monsters there. I still think it's the entrance to the hollow earth, but that's my... Oh, that's yeah. a cool that's, idea. that's a good one, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that is, Actually, I, I did have an idea once to... to this is really uh, messing with the setting, but I did have this idea once. I don't know if folks uh, remember the Pern novels. And like when the first ones came out, it felt like a like almost like a Dragonlance setting, right? And as the series went on, it became more and more an abandoned colony of spacefarers, is what you kind of figured out over time. And so I had this thought that you could do the same thing with Greyhawk, where Blackmore and like Expedition of the Par Barrier Peaks were the remnants of the fact that this was a space setting. And then the civilizations kind of devolved and found magic and went a different way. But, you know, it was still all there. All the science still worked and what that would do to a campaign. I, I think it would kind of go off the rails pretty quickly, but it was fun to, as a thought experiment. <laughs> Guys, you I think just... as you think about layering more of that in, though, you could do that. And to Eric's uh, point, I think, you know, that would create a world a little more like uh, the Empire of the Petal Throne, maybe where you've got that kind of underlying science fiction element that's stronger than it is in Greyhawk. Um, it would be interesting to kind of delve in. You know, that gives you the otherworldly side of things too, maybe, you know, uh, if you can have gates that take you back to the uh, science fiction lands or whatever. You just guys all just got dissed by uh, Pluffet Smedger. Let's see. What we have, else is new? Let's see. We have Anna Meyer and five liches as guests. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Oh, John Blue oh, Box. That's cr awesome. Crank it yeah. out. Oh, I, I, I was just, that I, was I just not, saw that in chat. That, I, I how, it was fun. It was fun. A powerful blow from the unseen one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. Yes. 
the uh, internet bot known as hey. Jared. Oh <laughs> my gosh, that is so wrong, man. That, is just, that was funny though. Thanks, John. That was awesome. Oh man, yeah. Ah, uh, but it was well, the funny. only one hasn't achieved lich them yet, so I'm working <laughs> on it. <laughs> We had a base question asked, and I know we've gone over this before, but but for, we have so many new people. This is the great thing about these cons. We get so many new people coming in the community every year, and it grows and grows. As you can see, that you know, it, it, that's what's so exciting. Um, pick. You want to start your first campaign. Give me your published source setting that you start with. I know a lot of people are going to say Hobbit, but there could be some other ones. What would you start with? Say that again. Sorry, Jim. Uh, First time you, someone's <coughs> DMing or playing Greyhawk and they want to use a published source setting for an entry level adventure or, you know, first level, where do you go? Where do you start with? Hmm. <coughs> Joe? I said it. Oh, go ahead. My, Eric, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, I'll give my answer I've given before. I go with N1 against the Cult of the Reptile God. Okay. Good one. Very good one. Very, very good one. The, the one that everybody would expect me to say is, is Hamlet. But I I would also say in search of the unknown. Well, that's cool. Yeah, or, well, yeah. Which was originally set in Greyhawk, and then they kind of they they literally just erased that paragraph out of the introduction. It got to be one, B two, David. Yeah, I think that was the, Mal, I think that was Malden's first adventure was in search of the unknown cool. when he was created. <laughs> very very. It's cool. the first one I ever ran. It came in the Holmes basic set that I had. Um. I'm going to be self-serving, and I'm going to say start them in the town of Diamond Lake in <laughs> yes! the Whispering Cairn. And I'm only saying that for a couple of reasons, not just because I'm familiar with it and like it, but there's two, I think, nice benefits to it. It's a little bit, well, we tried to make it anyway, a little bit more modernized take of the, here's the village and here's the adventure and you go back and forth between those two places. And unlike a lot of things like, unfortunately, uh, the, it gets called the Reptile God or Salt Marsh, where they're basically like, and there's a town there. And then you're kind of like, actually, N1's really good at that. Let me pull that criticism back. N1 and Hamlet, I think, do it pretty well. Yeah. But Salt Marsh does it really badly. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's a town, figure it out, folks. And so we tried to give you both. And then specifically, there was a free download called uh, Age of Worms Overload that had like 50 stat blocks we couldn't fit in the magazine. And so, you know, anywhere from the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the local thieves, guild guy, whatever, we gave you the stats, which is another pain in the ass, Smart. I think, for uh, for GMs to do sometimes. So well, that would be my answer. And you don't have to follow the Whispering Cairn adventure into the adventure path. You can just, that's just the local dungeon. Then you can go wherever the hell you want. And it's close to the city of Greyhawk. So you're well served there too. Those download supplements, I I, I mean, I, I have a, the more printed, like this thick. I mean, and it, they're great. The detail, yeah. the characters in there and all, they're fantastic. If you Thank want, you. there's different cults of a uh, Ouija in that area too, if I recall, correct? In, yeah, in, there's in that, that, the Green Lady yeah, cult, that's it, which the green came lady, from, yeah. I think, one of the cardboard. Yeah sheets in the city of Greyhawk box set. Yeah. It, um, there's a bunch of fun stuff. Definitely. That's a good one. Alan? DMG Monastery Dungeon. Oh! I have enjoyed that one many a time. I've used it to start uh, a campaign with my kids when they were doing a DD and d club in school for my oldest. And uh, those kids were learning first edition uh, seven, eight years ago. Uh, in the in the monastery dungeon, so I expanded it. I added a second level, and I built out the uh, first level a little bit more. But it's, a, it's also a great get, adventure. Didn't that also get detailed in dungeon? It did. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Tweet did it for third edition, uh, okay. right around the time three E was being released. Before, or after, right in that you know launch window, uh, and uh, he definitely put an interesting spin on it with uh, making it a uh, an evil monastery served by uh, devils as i remember originally or mm -hmm. something like that isn't that the one with it with the the gnome goes up and the ghoul eats him and then yep. yeah i remember that <laughs> then, yeah chomp 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 yeah um yeah and you awesome. can drop that thing anywhere you want i happen to put it in the gnarly forest uh perfect. above norwell but uh you know there's no reason you can't put it somewhere else perfect so uh, anyone else want to take that up on a low level, entry level? I, I, yeah. Make your own little place. Well, yeah. 
yeah. But a lot, a lot of people, so, yeah. a lot of people but, but want that pick, field. Pick, pick the, the spot, pick a spot that, that has nothing else within 50 or 100 miles. And, and, and then you, you, yep. you put your own little village there and your own little local villain, if it's only for, for starters, and then you read in the meantime, while they're doing it, then you read about, or read about the, 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 the country, so to speak. And if you like the country description, find an empty spot in there, create a village or, or some tiny little place and, and some local little villain and, and get it going and then read in and then tie that into the bigger setting. That's usually how I've, I've done it, so to speak. So, so I built my own little <coughs> place. Yeah. At least two of the people on this chat, I think Jay and Dennis and maybe others as well seem to have done a common theme which is when you're picking the setting that's like your home base, they seem to have picked like an area that is technically within a country based on the old boundaries, mm -hmm. but geographically it's like off by itself a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like isolated geographically from whatever country it's in. It's almost like it's, you know, a freestanding place. Mm -hmm. And by picking those little corners like that, I think that's a great place to start out and build yeah. your own little nested campaign within the larger campaign thank you very much for saying that eric so when we built altamira in 1987 it we have you know we have an order of Ulic defenses along the, the the jewel river to defend against the pomars right back before you know why isn't anyone protecting this border right that's what we thought and we're like well we we are allied with Celine. we need a stopover we need a military you know and that's how it developed it developed in the course of gameplay there was nothing there right how did milcott come about uh, uh, um, Dennis, how did it come about? Yeah. Uh, well, now Eric hit it on, uh, you know, on, on the head. Um, it was a corner that was away from everything, and so I could create this town that has its own history that I could tie into the history of the surrounding area, the migrations, and and all of that. But I wasn't tied to any existing politics or others. It was cool. it was an area that was just it was a clean slate. It, it looked like something should be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's that's why I picked it uh, to be down there. Um, I just had the idea for this independent city that that I could start working on. Is that goes back to I think when I was. Um, in grad school, um, when I started working on that, and yeah, I don't know, it just kind of all started falling into place. But um, it, I, I created it as a place that I needed for a base of operations because uh, at that point, City of Greyhawk box that hadn't come out I yet. Know, there exactly. were no, there were no cities. There was no place that I could use other than little things like Salt Marsh or Omelette. Or I wanted a bigger city, and there was nothing. So I, I created it. You um, and I, both of our campaigns diverged right at 1980 onward. You yeah. Know, and the 83 box set that came out didn't really make any major, major changes to the 80 box set. So... Mm -hmm. It gave you the, it gave you um, uh, what the deities are in here finally right in eighty three, mm -hmm. um, we had no deities. I mean, we were using finished deities in nineteen eighty. There were no graph deities. In fact, you know, everyone knows the story that um, Gary Gygax's first came campaign it was Thor and Odin were her deities. Yeah, you know. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that's just a that's a it's a good Eric. Thank you for that. Uh, it's a good point that. Um, there's a lot of places you can develop. I mean, a lot of open spaces. Yeah. As as um, Eric Mona said, Bissell. <laughs> Grand March. Grand March at least has against Call the Reptile God in it, right? You know? Uh, I even put I even put Return to Durbanford from uh, from uh, Necromancer Games Sword and Sorcery in here because there's nothing here. You know, so um, you got to add things like that. All right, uh, let's see if we've got any other questions here. Does any of you want to ask any of the rest of the panel any other questions as well? Six. You guys are easy. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question oh, for Eric, actually. Please, go mm -hmm. for it. Um, I don't know, is is Christoph in the in the chat? No. Don't know, okay. Uh, well, he, he sent me, sent me a, a question about a week ago. Um, that I had completely forgotten about. And so um, in, in one of our um, 
City of Greyhawk articles from the LG series, right? Um, somebody brought up in one of the chats that uh, Eric had written, Kieran uh, was invited to join the August Order of the, uh, uh, like the Circle of Eight after the destruction of Odalu and Tensor, but refused due to his duties as master of the Guild of Wizardry. Now that he's passed on the role of Guild Master, so we, Eric wrote that in, in the, one of the very first City of Greyhawk uh, articles, passed on the role. It's only a matter of time before he opts to join Big B Auto and others, and then Everybody, including us, forgot about that line for everything that happened after that. And so the, I guess the question was what happened to Kieran and why didn't he become Kieran a member? Jolushian. Yeah. It's only the, a matter of time. Yeah. It just hasn't happened yet. It's it just, just hasn't matter. happened yet. <laughs> okay. A wizard is never late, <laughs> <laughs> no, including no. to the circle of eight. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. No, um, because things when that was. Spring of 591 when an LG5 was... So we're talking in. 2001. Yeah. And then I stopped writing for the setting, so it's not my fault. And, uh, <laughs> well, no one's blaming you. It was, But the question is, uh, was, I guess, um, what happened? <laughs> or, has anything happened? I mean... Since then? Has, probably yeah, not. like, you know, there's obviously been a... a um, additional sort of fan consensus around certain projects and things like that. What, what is the status of the, of the circle of eight vis-a-vis? Uh, -vis Return the, of the uh, eight is the final point I have still. Uh, Alamazad, yeah, the yeah. wise, Theodane. Yeah, so yeah Alamazad. Uh, and and, and Warner Starko. Yeah. Jalarzy <laughs> Salivarian. Right. Yeah. Jalarzy, Jalarzy was at the Joust last night. She was cool. hanging out in the stands. Yeah, yeah. so there you go. Oh, she had yeah. a bit of good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. This is another. This is a nebulous question because Big Big Mac asks, "Give me what's the most underrated part of Earth or Greyhawk?" Like, that's so cool. Underrated. Yeah, that's yeah. So something. The, the rest, like, the part uh, outside of the Flannies. Well, I'm sure uh, it has way more to give than than we have hmm. we have seen so far. Yeah, well, Mike our, just said all. <laughs> our our, our oh. future. Um, uh, sea of Dust adventure path. Right? <laughs> yeah, that exactly. I'm looking forward to it, Dennis. You just need to write it. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. uh, I've, I've borrowed ideas mostly from Dark Sun in trying to design parts, but my players haven't really done much with it yet. Um, having trouble advancing our timeline lately, but. <laughs> um, that's a funny thing, uh, Dennis. My timeline has, because I'm streaming and running, oh, has, and all these special groups has, constantly. has frozen. I have not advanced oh. a year in three years. Oh, really? Yeah. I would have thought the opposite. If you're playing so much, you're actually moving forward. But it's all these different groups. I got the Slob uh, Squad Squad. Yeah. I, got, I got Two Drink Minimum. I got my players, and they have 27 different adventuring groups. Yeah, I, oh, I played soon 40 sessions in two years, yeah. and I've advanced So it's actually days. slowed. So it's, 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 kind of, it's getting slow here. Yep. Uh, so underrated, underrated Greyhawk, underrated Earth. I think one little commented upon element that I think is kind of interesting is that the... Um, Duchy of Ten got overrun, but their government is in exile somewhere else. And yeah. I just kind of like the idea. That's sort of very true to history. And I like the idea of these displaced courts and things like that. So I mm -hmm. think that's a very interesting. Yep. The whole Tenha thing was interesting before it got sort of defeated and scattered. And now I think it's interesting to see what that looks like in Diaspora. Uh, so uh, I think that Diaspora in general is an underrated aspect of the Greyhawk setting and its history. Yeah. And shield and, lands after the invasions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm tackling right now. Yep. I'm going to ask a funny question. Were you at the bar that night, Eric, for 10? Are you the culprit of, of that part <laughs> when they killed off 10? <laughs> Living what? Or was that Jake, heard Jacobs rumors and, of and Jason was, uh, Bullman? Decided yeah, was, at the bar that night to destroy mm -hmm. ten. With the, yeah, there was a no. It I had nothing. Day, <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, yeah, we heard rumors. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I don't even know what that's about, so I'm okay. totally innocent. Okay. So. okay perfect. Right. Yeah, we just heard rumors that that he was killed off one bar night at Gen Con. And, yeah. And, 
that 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 the country thing. was killed. Yeah, off? with that, with yeah, that, yeah, uh, that Ted was all that off. all yeah. that phasing thing that they did yeah. or whatever. Oh, I'm not talking about that. I mean, uh, just like uh, I, know, I was just just making a joke. Part. I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, no, but I just don't even know much about that. Sounds very organized play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. But that, they're both good. The Shield Lands is really underrated. Uh, yeah. And, and Anna and I go back and forth on this all the time. And that is because I, I think it's the most divergent of the of the areas that I, we ours are completely different. Great uh, Shield Land settings, completely different. And that's so what makes it so cool. You know, we have some similarities, like we both use the Free Reavers over here. You know, in yeah. Orange Society, uh, but but the rest of it, you know. It's a completely different uh, shield lands, but it has both has a great feel to it. So it's a good one. That's a good one there, uh, Maldon saying. How about any other underrated places, or underrated things, or characters, or? Well, I know one that didn't get much other than the module it was in is um, Imperia um, from at least the version that was uh, I six, which I know is not the original, same as the original R one to four. But there is a campaign setting in I six um that uh could be flushed out um and uh you know you could integrate it more with uh particularly if it was trading with uh the the great kingdom before it fell and the like you could actually move the the center of the campaign east so probably not a popular opinion but it is something you could do okay very cool yeah, I, th I think len lakofka's stuff doesn't really get enough credit either really bingo uh, i thought that um you know, Bone Hill was definitely my favorite of the low-level modules uh, when I was a kid after Homlet. And I think it even stands the test of time maybe even better than Homlet. Well, uh, Alan, you have, some seen, you have seen the artwork for this year. I, I, I have the shirt, although yes, I'm not you do. it today. So. Uh, and that was, and we miss Len dearly, um, you know, uh, just, and the, uh, Troy had uh, his artist. Uh, I'm sorry, Troy. My brain just shut off. Uh, do three different. He did a mock up of an ode to Bone Hill, an ode to um, ba uh, Baltrin Speakin, an ode to the Ghost Tower. And when he ca all three came back, we're like, we got to use the Len Lakafka one. You know, and yeah. that's and that's what. And then Anna colorized it, and then we uh, got that on the shirt. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and I got to play in one of his adventures today that wasn't published yet. Uh, so Josh ran, Josh Pop ran the uh, Ravages of the Mind, which was set in Radic and was a lot of fun. And uh, hey, Kayla. It, was a, it was a great adventure. Um, great to see you. Yeah, yeah. How did that go? How, Ravages of the Mind. I know there's been a whole community of, of, of Greyhawk and it's on our server that have been working on have been working on it uh, to get that go so that we can get it to uh, for publication for to the you know for free to the community i think this was a major play test so it was yeah, yeah. so this was i guess the first big win for this or maybe the second but uh, anna you know way more about all this than i do well yeah so. it's it's on the on on the way forward it's been a kind of a long struggle i'm, I'm just <clears throat> part of the group that discusses it occasionally and 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 since on the mapping aspect and i put some of the content i got involved just a tiny bit putting it on my map so to speak so it was referenced when they developed it so to speak so i've never played stuff but it's and and we hope that it's it's coming and we're also hoping that we can get more stuff together on lens and and kind of get the pieces together and then write up hopefully something that could be a good homage to what he intended so to speak so so hopefully, yep yeah, the uh, uh josh also mentioned that there's another adventure that's pretty close to being in a play testable form uh something around a lighthouse yep which i don't know anything more about but so, but that's so hopefully cool. we can have more more, more yeah more yeah. stuff that is based on linda kafka's leg legacy and, and his material yep i know a project i'd love to tackle after we get altamira published because i don't just the time has to go there would be that even if we got to make it up and a little bit would be that L6. Cause you know, uh, if you all don't know, we had a meeting, Len, Anna, myself and Troller games. We had a meet an initial meeting about getting it published. And then he got really ill. And then that was, you know, and, and, and just, we, you know, we we're talking, it's a shame. It never went anywhere. We, I, I know what his thoughts were on it, but we don't have any. We uh, and when he passed, Anna got all the information yeah, we, from we his didn't partner. Find anything. Yeah, the 
problem was that it was probably on his computer and we didn't get that. Yeah, so we, we it's only a got shame. the printed out stuff. So, so yeah. It would have been great, um, uh, but we could, uh, you know, we could do it and owe to and do that one, uh, you yep. know. So that would be nice. But very good one, uh, Alan. Anyone else want to tackle that on underrated? I think the Wild Coast. I love that one. Yeah. You don't really, I mean, it should be like one of the yeah. best, most exciting <laughs> places. It's right next to Greyhawk. It's the launching pad for Hamlet. It's got right. all these city states and everything. And there's nothing. Well, you yeah, got Lord run over. It was like from 10. there. Yeah. Right? Isn't Robilar from the Wild Coast? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like Gia Nick gets baked and, into the cake, but they've just never yeah. did anything with it. Yeah. And I know great. Rob had, had a module for it. There was he had a module, oh. the Wild Coast, and I think Barbarous really. Coast is that the one you're thinking of? The, his 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 number serial numbers filed off thing, the Barbarous Coast, or are you thinking of something else? I th it, th it might be the same thing. I know he at one point I saw it referred to as the Wild Coast, but it might have turned into that for obvious reasons. Yeah, I, I thought there was a tiny bit on the Wild Coast in um, the super module version of A1. To four. There is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is. a little bit. But but it's, it's, not... it's a little bit, but it's nowhere near what you could do with it. Yeah. BB yeah. There's a little more enslavers, too. Yeah. yeah. BB Fanfun says tensors from facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Tensor, I mean... Morton, Kane, and Robbie Lar, meaning, come on. We have, have yeah. to. I have to wonder if, like, Wild Coast, City of Greyhawk, that whole region for the longest time just kind of had a Gary kind of had a marker on it where it's like, yeah, I'll, we'll get, oh, you know, or Gary and Rob be. or whatever, he, yeah. where we'll get to it and other people kind of deliberately stayed away from it yeah. and then it just never. Well, and that, what, that I, what I ended up use, doing is because I had players running through that area uh, all the time, I ended up co-opting stuff from other places. So um, there was a wonderful publication put out a long time ago by Columbia Games called Cities of Harn. Mm. And so there are eight excellent cities in there. And what I did was I just ripped those maps and descriptions out. And I have the city of, Fa of Fax is the town of is the city of Cherifir from that adventure. So I have a Fax. Um, I have a Narwhal. Uh, I have a couple of other cities, and I, they're just uh, – my Verba Bonk actually comes from that as well, from that cities of Harn. Might as well have three maps of Verba Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Well, yeah. but when, when I was doing that, there were zero maps. Right, fair. fair. Yes, fair. there's just <laughs> – so, Has I'm anybody sure. ever used the, the city of Sanctuary from Thieves' World? I oh. Yeah, I, I've, I have Remember it. That? I tried to use it. It didn't really fit for anything that I was, but yeah, I remember that, and that was an interesting for the time. Yeah, a publication. I, I took pieces Absolutely. out of it, but I never used the map or the city as a yeah, whole. But I took here. like, yeah, I looked through it and took oh this little bit. <laughs> didn't here, that map that's... have missing squares for like geomorphs? <laughs> no, that's that's the was, map. Lo Lankmar Lankmar map. map had that. Oh yeah, Lankmar. Oh, Lankmar. right, yep. Lankmar. Yeah. Okay. But it was an interesting concept because you can take and you can also reuse these city morphs in other cities and build it. So back in the yeah. time. Back in the day, I think it was today. It will be kind of not really useful, but back it's then, just hard to get a sense of place from a map that has <laughs> yeah. a bunch of blank squares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you had to be supposed to take them and then write it down. So, so yeah. yeah. So I don't like it Portals in that product. To other worlds. <laughs> yeah, but I like someone the idea. wrote an it article cool on that, idea. Eric yeah. Boyd, right? Portals to other worlds. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> in Iron Gate, right? I think oh, I'm remembering that correctly, aren't I? Well, and Roger, yeah. Roger had his portals of Greyhawk as well, right? Yeah. Oh, you're th you're thinking of uh, the the World's End, uh, the World's End Tavern, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, the World Serpent Inn, World Serpent, World Inn. Serpent Inn slash yeah, the Wild Goose slash the World Serpent Inn, yes, yeah. That was yeah. fun just because I got to sneak in I, my favorite Greyhawk character, <laughs> which is what. Uh, the lizard man from Rogue Scholar. Oh, <laughs> Phobos, isn't that his name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, love I, that, I love that picture. <laughs> when, when I did the City of Greyhawk map uh, and we wrote the articles about it, I put uh, the World Serpent in, in there and awesome. the Wild Goose. The Wild Goose yeah. is there. All right, so I'm going to ask. Then Gary and I put it into Iron Gate as well, right? 
Did that make it into 5e, the World Serpent Inn, or is that the different inn of, there's some uh, similar idea, right? This idea of like an um, outer planar inn, isn't there something like that? I don't know. You guys are the ones who are supposed to be in touch with 5th edition, not me. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you this, um, we have a, there's an inner portal um, inn that Todd Stashrick has in his Mystic Libations book. Okay, so there is one here, which is pretty neat, so I always recommend this. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. Plus, you get a whole bunch of drinks. You know how you have your you have your, your book on uh, food. Now you have your book on alcohol, alcoholic D and D drinks. What could go wrong, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anthony Huso's Night Wolf Inn is really good in that kind of way too. It it kind of takes your inner planer in a step further, and it creates an associated guild that you can explore the inn and the Demi planar chambers off of it uh, through uh, for okay. I mean that that's like part of the charter of being a member uh, or a guest at the inn is that you can adventure in these other areas, um, and then it does the same thing where you can kind of connect worlds with it in the Howl's Moving Castle way or whatever. Here in different places, that kind of thing. I'm going to ask this question now, as I always do, out of courtesy to everyone. Uh, if we run late, are you okay? If anyone has to leave at 9, it's okay. But if we're going to run a little late? I'm going to have to drop at 9. I know you do. Yeah. Are we okay to go like 9.30, everyone? Is that all right? Sure. Awesome. We're having a fun time here with this discussion. So, okay. All right. Um, we always do. Always do, yes. <laughs> Third and um, I'm go- I want to ask – I want to. I'll answer – Pat66, I'm going to answer your kind question at the end, okay? Because we want to give uh, as ma- as much uh, detail for Greyhawk as we can here. Um, panel, any other, anyone else want to ask another question of each other? So I've got a question before everybody turns into a pumpkin. So, so what are your favorite, uh, I guess, adventures or perhaps characters or something? But I guess I was thinking adventure that you've taken into Greyhawk that oh, were not native question. to Greyhawk originally, whether oh. it was a D and D adventure. Or uh, an adventure at a merp, or whatever. Wow, that's a great question. Because I thought you were going to say, "What published source character did you use to start using your campaign?" But that's this is a different question. Ooh. Well, I use the the Lankmar stuff that TSR published. I use that for my Greyhawk. I I, I throw okay. all kinds of bits and pieces of that in there. Okay, that's a great fit too. Yeah. I've done. A, I've dragged a lot of the Harn stuff in the, the Harn Godstones. I've placed all over Greyhawk, and all of the the Earthmaster ruins I've placed over all over Greyhawk. I've used that stuff, but because my city, my world of Greyhawk, my Greyhawk campaign, has threads into everywhere else. My players are traveling from there. Um, so, for example, a brawl from Spelljammer is is in uh, the grinder within gray space, and so it's part of my Greyhawk campaign. And so, um, so yeah, I've I've they're visiting places that that are technically not Greyhawk, but yeah, I've the Harn stuff is some of the most numerous material I think that I've adapted to actually be within uh worth uh sure for me it's deities and demigods i still have finished deities to this day but i know forgotten realms has too like my leaky we use a lot of those uh some celtic some finished deities in our campaign and have melded them in and i've even purloined deities like the red knight from forgotten <laughs> realms into my greyhawk so don't everyone beat me but that's yeah <laughs> I think the whole time I was playing Greyhawk, I was too much of a like uh, uh, a tight ass to use stuff from other campaigns. I was very, hey man, I was very straight laced. It's got to be official, or it's not. We prefer allowed. the term uh, uh, purist. There yeah, I was. A, I was. Oh too boy! Too like when I was around when when Joe and I met in, in real life, I was I was real purist in yes. a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> music and all kinds of other things I've relaxed on significantly. And so nowadays, I suspect I might be pulling all kinds of stuff in. But I think back then, I would have been like, if you want to play something else, just play the different game. 
Okay, <laughs> Night Screed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to take that up? I have a special quick last second question for Joe Block I got to get in before he goes. Oh, yeah, please. please. Okay. Joe, considering yeah. your studies of the armies of Greyhawk and military war gaming, if you could have changed, contributed to Greyhawk Wars, oh. how would you have altered the course of events? Sealed copy. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I, I would not have. I would not have lost the uh, the Horn Society because. Thank I, you. I kept the Horn Society as a thing. Um, what I would have done with the Greyhawk Wars, though, is not make them the Greyhawk Wars. I would just have okay. The Great Kingdom is having a war with the Iron League over here. Oh, and at the same time, it just so happens that I use. And and uh, Furiandi are having a big war over here, and oh, at the same time, you know, rather than making it out to be some kind of grand unified World War II, it would just be a there's a bunch of wars happening at the same time, and I think that would would have made it feel a lot more organic and a lot less contrived. Well, real world history is the planet. Someplace on the planet is always in a state of war. Exactly, uh, and modern day is no, no different. And we had all the, the, the Gygax articles, the Gygax and, and Quince articles leading up to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. there were yeah. wars all in 577, 578. You know, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, why they felt the need to make it one big event eludes me to this day. It's easier to package as a product. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, you're probably right there. But it's, um, you know, that's a great, great, uh, antiquitous asked that, and uh, and I, I wanted to get that in. So I um, hope. Uh, yeah, thanks. Joe, thanks a lot. I did put the invitation out to uh, the guy who says you're all liches in chat, see if you try to get him on here to take your place, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> He's too chicken. Oh, uh, they're going at yeah, it. They're going back at it. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to, I'm going to bow out. Thank you all very much. Okay. I'll talk to you about Thank packs. You. I'll talk to you about packs soon. Yep. Yep. Have a nice good one. Please visit com. That's yep. my plug. <laughs> Have a good night, Joe. Plug it in the chat. <laughs> uh, Greyhawk Mike asked a question. Uh, um, do you prefer being a DM or a player in your Greyhawk play? I Maybe prefer being a DM. I, DM I was trying. I was actually thinking about this just like yesterday. Um, and I I haven't been a player in probably three decades, so I guess the answer would be I prefer being a DM. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, wow. I okay. run all my games, and I've not played in anybody else's in a long time. I'm going to remedy that in the announcement at the end, Dennis. Okay. okay. I'm going to because I already kind of, I hinted at it last night, and I'm going to I'm going to remedy that coming up. So yeah. I don't know if I'd be a good player. Well, well, I'm it's so out of one practice shot. of because playing is a very different mindset than being a DM. It is. And my my main player that I've had since the mid '80s, Rick, who's in the chat room and sending me messages about, hey, we've done that. Um, he's an excellent player because he he and I know each other really well, and so you get that synergy happening. He's a good player. Uh, I don't know if I could do what what Rick does. Yeah, no, you're welcome, Rick. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could if I could be successful in my own adventures as a player. I don't know. Okay. Anyone else want to handle it? Take that one up. I like both of them. I mean, I really, really enjoy the writing part of being a DM and run, running campaigns. But you know, I also like the just show up and have fun aspect of being <laughs> a player. Um, so, you know, like at the moment, um, I'm arguably playing into and running to, and that's a really nice balance between them. Okay. Eric. I prefer probably to be a GM when it comes to Greyhawk, just because, like, um, I want, I, you know, I would want the details to, I mean, I'm just such a nerd. I would want the details to be right. And I don't yeah. know with this crowd, any of you running, it'd be fine. But, you know, if it was just like, Hey, come join, I think uh, my game might be in, I don't know, Greyhawk. I'll be like, uh. <laughs> um, so I think when it comes to that, I'd probably want to be the GM or the DM. Sorry. I'm retraining myself. The, the, the DM. Um, but, uh, but I, I really like being a player, you know, most of the time it's a lot easier um, but I think I love the control of being the, the game master better in general. 
Okay. But, I, but it's so much easier to be a player. I much prefer doing that these days. Because you can go off and Van Aaron Vork can do whatever he so chooses. Yeah. Yeah, but the difference, though, Jay, is that if you're the DM, you can have five different Venarium <laughs> right. yeah, own true. crazy that's voice true. and uh, shtick. And, yeah, you know, I, that's true. it's been a while since I've run something, especially something ongoing. And I'm, I'm really like, I got the fever for the flavor, man. I want to run something really bad. Uh, you should run a gray hockey. I well, think he's so got. Too. We'll see. Well, yeah, there would be. We'll see. Well, we got. I mean, there's a lot of. There's Plenty some opportunities out there. There's yeah. a lot of options, and like I said, yeah. I'll talk about and, an idea coming up. But yeah. when you've designed an entire new world and yeah. game system, though, it kind of, yeah, yeah. time is... That's is, your baby. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's even stuff like Call of Cthulhu I want to run, you know? It's like, yeah. A, yeah, yeah, it's a big world out there. There's lots of things to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing GURPS right now, for example. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, we, we I've streamed. never played GURPS. How we, is it? Yeah. It's, it's really basic. It's yeah. got... 3d6s okay. and you roll them and try to get under a number and that's at least in the way that we're playing it which is a you know for the audience 14th century uh, we're all playing medieval peasants like i guess we're 15 point characters and we're really really bad uh so it's it's light the rules are light uh in at least in the mm. game it's on the glass cannon network uh weekly until next week cool. five episodes but it's really fun and i'm enjoying it but my point is i'll play anything Anna and I were lucky enough, and I, I'm sorry, I forget the name uh, of the gentleman from Chaosium. He live streamed it. We played a Call of Cthulhu yeah. game on the channel yeah. with Alyssa cool. Faden and uh, yeah. and uh, and um, um, Eric Gla uh, Glazer from uh, Frog God. It was a f fun night. It was a fun time. Nice. What's yeah. the blue moon? Um, yep. So uh, Balfour with the bat battle text coming over the holidays. Balfour and I, I, I run a battle tech stream once in a blue moon. Yes, we'll have a battle tech game too coming up. All right, that's a DM player question. That was a real good one. Uh, we got Joe's in, which is really good. Um, any other questions from the audience before I bring up uh, one or two more here myself? I Eric like, has one. Yeah. I got one. Please, Eric, go for it. And your question kind of inspired it because I was thinking of like, oh. What are some other weird games and things? But I'm curious, what is the item that y'all saw an ad for in Dragon Magazine that you were that you bought and you were most impressed with in the history of your gaming career? Was there anything you learned about from Dragon? I'm gonna I gotta I gotta pull mine up here right now. Yeah, I, gotta I have find a box it. here that I found in. All right, let's school. let's hear it. I'm just curious. Tactiles. Oh, yes. Tactiles. Yes. Wow, they those were expensive were, as hell to ship to Sweden. This. I paid more than uh, probably about 500 bucks for two. They, there's two sets jam packed in the in, in one. Yeah. That I saw an ad for that. This is like late 90s, I think it was. And, and they were fabulous. They've been yeah. w loved for over 20 years. And now I, I need to plug a gaming paper has a follow up product that does the same job as this and and i haven't tested it but it looks awesome and and so if and this is really cool these these tactiles there was a brilliant idea but done in a very expensive and heavy way because this this way is very heavy yeah yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but that is my my yeah, no, those uh, are great that's a fantastic yeah. that's like maybe the best accessory of the d20 era in my yeah. opinion mm -hmm. that thing is yep. really good dennis did you have one um uh, yeah, and I, my my play, Rick, Rick is gonna love my answer to this. Uh, uh, my player, um, one of the things that first was advertised in Dragon uh, that I was kind of this sounds pretty sketchy, and when I when I actually got it, I went, "Wow!" Hey, no camera box. Look at that. Yeah. Wow! Uh, this really surprised me more than anything else. Um, I mean, when you Can't find see it. when when certain adventures come out, and when things like this come out, right? But but Eric's not looking. But <laughs> oh, sorry, when when you stuff like this comes out, you know it's going to be good, right? And a lot of the stuff that comes out is iteratively built on the campaign world or whatever. But when something is just straight out of left field and you really have no idea what it's going to be like, that that's one of the things that stands out to me that really surprised me that this was like, wow. And we've had a blast with it ever since. Um, 
and but yeah but that that was one of the standout things i think i would have to say nice anybody else have anything come to mind yeah i'm looking i'm actually looking for it and i can't find it so here's a quick story in 19 uh in the, the very early 80s there was and alan you'll remember this and i forget the guy's name dave the great big miniatures case Right, it was huge. You could fit dragons in it, and all. It was in Dragon Magazine, and the guy was from Haddon Heights, New Jersey. Oh. Okay, and so yeah. my buddy Walt and I went over. He had a place where he had in store, where all around in his house upstairs with all Ralph Parthas, and he was reselling, and he had these custom built cases. And we went in there, and I bought the Dwarven Stretcher Crew from Ralph Partha, and I bought Lost Caverns of Shokanth from him. And that was like one. Of, that was like one of the second or third modules ever back in the day. That that show, original show, Kent. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. But I, I I wanted to show you the the, the ad. I can't find it. It was called the miniatures case. Uh, and yeah, by I'm Griffin not familiar Ga with that one. By Griffin so. Games. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking for it the rest of the show now. But yeah, it was in a dragon. It was in like three or four dragon magazines. So yeah, pretty neat. So ones that always stood out to me was the uh, the old. Thieves Guild ads mm -hmm. from the dragons in like the 40s through yeah. the 60s or 70s, you know. A nice word and a knife in the back gets you more than a nice word. Uh, and they, they were fun because the, the game system built, built out a lot of uh, detail. You could adapt for thieves. Uh, and then there was a ton of adventures that were really well done that you could port into Greyhawk. Because uh, they had that same kind of Lankmar, Greyhawk kind of feel for them. And they also published Haven, uh, which was a thief-based city, uh, among others, too. So I, I thought they were always fun. So I'm going to mis misanswer your question. But, okay. Um, I actually think it was Dragon Magazine itself. And what I mean by that is... Because you don't get this in the modern era where they've kind of gone away from it. But Dragon Magazine itself was kind of uh, like, here's your bag of fun and you have no idea what's going to be in it, right? You would buy it almost sight unseen. And like, then, you you know, the, the cover art, right, would be like, almost always would get me on a story that I had for my campaign. And then, you know, and then I didn't like every article in it. And I'm, I'm thinking back to like, you know, the sixties and seventies, like yeah. when I first started buying those like first and first edition dragons, um, you know, like I remember when the Annie Paladin one came out, oh, like there, yeah. was, there were some articles I hated. There were some articles I loved and there were some articles I was bored with, but it felt like every single issue, there was like one article that really clicked for me yeah. and like, Oh, this is part of my mental headspace now, but you know, everything else I knew what was coming and what I was going to be buying basically Right, you know, because you could read it on the back. You might have seen it in the ads coming and everything, so it didn't have the same surprise. But to me, Dragon Magazine, the best part of it was that I have no idea what's coming next month, right? It's just going to show up, and, and there's going to be some idea. I'm going to be like, wow, that's always been true, but I never thought of it before. You know what I mean? So to yeah. me, that was, the, that was the key thing was the yeah. grab back aspect of Dragon Magazine I loved. And miss cool. now that we don't and really have the it. important yeah. thing about Dragon Magazine in those early days is before the internet, it was our only source of information about anything about this, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, research mm -hmm. was reading Dragon Magazine. That that was doing research in Greyhawk or whatever. It was, yeah. That was our only source. Yeah, so I still contend that the Dragon Archive, despite the fact that it may have caused uh, Wizards of the Coast some harm, <laughs> Uh, from lawsuits or whatever, was the single best supplement ever published <laughs> yeah. for the game. Yeah, that was an amazing um, resource, that's for sure. I think for me, I never, the, 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 for me, the, the, there was, I think more like kind of what Dennis said, it was like the window into the rest of the industry. So you'd see like Palladium ads and ads yeah. for other games yeah. and things. Uh, but you know, there's always the, the, the one that got away, you know, and, and I'm curious if any of you guys ever got one of those dragon bone electronic dice rollers yeah they uh, that anybody have a dragon bone that uh, like uh -oh. oh alan has oh, one somebody yeah, alan's gonna... got one hell yeah baby <laughs> let's, let's see what it looks like oh is that mint in package no it's not mint in the package it's in the box package. but it's not uh it's not mint but does it work still 
It does. I'm so oh, wow. now I know what you're talking I about. I, remember the yeah. I didn't remember the name, so now I okay, awesome. I remember the picture yeah, from the see. ad. Yeah. I don't think I have the battery in it oh, at the wow. moment. Oh, let's so it, okay. it doesn't vibrate. Make noises. Yeah, yeah. Press the oh. button and then you get yeah. the LEDs to to. Oh right. wow! Them, so. I've <laughs> yep. Wow, Alan, I'm impressed. Yeah, well, that's that's on my pile of things to eventually get rid of because, of course, it's completely useless. So. Oh, can, can it, what are you talking it do... about? It randomly generates numbers. <laughs> yeah, by, exactly. By by you do all the <laughs> dice. Yeah, from the D4 up to D100. Oh or, or, yeah, or... yeah. So yeah. it's got a selector on there, and you can uh -huh. select uh, a D3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 20, or percentage. Ooh, and then it'll cool. give you a result and, accordingly. Yeah. See, and it light it lights it up with a uh, yeah. with a tens column, mm -hmm. um, and then the one through ten numbers down here. And at the then bottom. you have to know speak binary Such and advanced stuff like technology. that. Look what yeah. I I, I, yes. I did not I did not. Is find there any my... beeping? Look Is what I found. Though? I don't remember. You it might be. There you go. There's I the found ad. That ad. I found that ad. Oh, yeah. oh, so magic. Boy, do I want that. This is in uh, Dungeon uh, Dragon sixty one. So there it is, Dragon Bone. DB Enterprises, Crestwood, Illinois. Famous DB Enterprises. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice Along one. with DB Cooper. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm still looking for my uh, my uh, um, friend's uh, uh, one, and I'm probably not going to find it till we're offline, So, uh, but that's all right. I, I know it was in these early 60s. I can't remember which one it was. I know that it was multiple ones, too. It was a uh, – so, That um, Aftermath game always – Yeah. Oh, I ha we play Aftermath. Uh, the Morrow Project was yeah. another one that got advertised a lot. Aftermath was was uh, Tim. You know, the ever mysterious Tim would take that yeah. to an, a whole nother level. The of Aftermath. Oh my gosh! Yeah, got all the box set and all the adventures downstairs still uh, on cool. that. Yeah, a, a really good one. Um, there was a lot of games in there. I was like, what is this all about? Like Jeroon and yeah, you know, I was uh, just thinking oh, about yeah. that. One. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what is that? The Talislantia ad that said no elves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, yeah, I have a copy of of the. I, I've used some of the creatures from the Talislantia mm -hmm. um, books. Um, yeah, yeah. I always liked elves, so I never liked. I've never played Talislantia. I never bought any other products well, because but the, of that. Yeah. Ad. <laughs> the gimmick was is there were some creatures in there that were very elf like. Ah, gotcha. I never uh, got that, so it was like, okay, don't they don't like elves? I like elves, so I'm not going to buy any of it. So that way. Oh. There was a there was a comic in the early '80s called Elf Warrior, and the ad uh, the the uh, the artist's name was Peter Sue, and it said, "I'm Peter Sue, and I hate elves, and I'm making this elf comic just to kill elves on every page of." Comic. <laughs> uh, I was a huge fan. Uh, you would have hated that one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's great. Yeah. The old wormy comics. Those are oh, oh man, yes. it was a shame because they just stopped right in the middle of the story too. Well, he yeah he he just quit. So. Oh, is that what happened? Oh man, yeah. TSR uh, refused to publish the Shadow of Solomon Mariah, um, so he started to going down the path of self publishing it. But it was when they uh, decided either to cancel the project after accepting it or just said, no, we won't publish it or something oh, to man. that effect that he, uh, he started yeah, like, down years that later, and then it, it, it got yeah. Years later, down. fans tracked him down. He was driving a cab in uh, yeah. Illinois. I found this, though. There was a rumor um, dun, dun, when I joined, Oh, yeah. When I joined the uh, periodicals department at Wizards of the Coast in what had been like 2001 or something like that, I asked around, and apparently they had the the staff of Dragon had reached out to Dave Trampier, yeah. uh, Trampier, and um, he said that he would do the comic again if they. Uh, I think they had to print a treasury or something, and they had to buy him new markers because he didn't have any markers. And at the <laughs> time, they're like, "Well, no, we can't do that." And by the time I got there, I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah let's get oh, a collection wow. like pass around a friggin' hat and buy the man some new markers what the hell is wrong with you but i think that the the die was cast at that point yeah. so. no because so apparently the uh the dm screen uh was done with marker which yeah. i would never have guessed at the time wow and it's uh, apparently a bigger piece than that too that they reframed it wasn't originally yeah. supposed to be the right it was a little more square in shape originally pretty yeah. cool <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, unbelievably ads uh, when you're a kid you're like oh that looks so cool 
Um, do you guys remember these articles? The Electric Eye, Computer Tech and Terminology. Like, yeah. it's basic programming, you know. But it was funny. They they even uh, have a had a, a review of a flight sim in Dragon back in those days. Oh, my so gosh. It was like when I started reading the old Dragons and, and PDF because I bought those CD-ROMs of the first 250. I, I so I started reading on, on my tablet like a year ago. And then I came to issue like 40 or whatever it was early. And they had a, a, a new my flight sim. And since I'm I'm an I'm aviation buff that I, an idiot, I love to. So I read it and what else? I never would have guessed that they actually had reviews. They had reviews of all sorts of video games back then. So, so it was kind I of think amazing. the I think my first dragon issue was around 41, I think. Something like that. that that's Tramp Art, isn't it? Isn't oh, that yeah. the, oh no, wait a minute. That one's not. The tra I'm thinking of the one with the big dragon on the front near the, the castle. Right. Oh, and uh, yeah. no, that's Hildebrand. Oh, that's Hildebrand. Hildebrand. That's Hildebrand. That okay. was Hildebrand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Forty nine. That was yeah. Uh, forty forty one has the halls of Beryl Durr in it. Actually, that that Hildebrand painting that uh, of the dragon hanging on to the tower. Yeah, that that's makes... the one you're thinking of. Yes. That's it. That painting is the inspiration that I had for creating Malkosia Castle. Oh. That's that's where the, my idea came from, is expanding that tower to let something me, bigger. Let me show it uh, for everyone that's so awesome. you can see which one it is here. This one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you uh, pull up from my website, the sketch that I have of Malkosia Castle, um, you'll recognize it very much. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So you got the same tower set up and everything there on that angle. Wow. Uh, oh, that's great. That, you t a lot of us took inspiration when we were younger, and that's yeah. just so wonderful about, you know, uh, about the game itself. So... Um, <laughs> Can we just take a moment to Please. think about how big that dragon is in yeah. D&D terms? Uh, yeah. A, Holy moly. Well, come on. You have the red one in the, bo the box set, right? The big box. Does, can it fit a tower in the palm of its hand? <laughs> That's right. So that gargantuan red is really, really big. Oh, That's wow. no moon. It's a red dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What does that thing eat? My lord. Yeah. Yeah. Cities. Rocks. Well, I, I'm revising the, the metabolism of a lot of these creatures and say that they have uh, connections to other planes and stuff. So they have a different type of metabolism because oh, I realized right, right. if they you if you have dragons that big, fire. yeah, exactly. Because if if you have beasts of that size, they will eat up every every deer, cow, or whatever they have in in thousands of square miles. So you wouldn't the, the work. Stomach so. is a portal to the positive material plane. Yeah. Oh, well, what, yeah. So, so I, I, at least. I'm, I'm kind of retweaking stuff like that. They are not part of the. They're not of natural origin, so to speak. So uh, they it's don't. Probably eat. for the best. Yeah. So so I try because I'm I'm a world simulationist in that sense. So I need to explain these things to myself so I don't go nuts nuts. Right. And that way I don't have to bother my players with it. So yeah. Uh, we uh, we got to all ask Anna a question. Oh. Are you going to stream again, your game? Yes, I think so. It, it gave me really, uh, uh, really okay. a good kind of good, good taste and good vibes doing it. But okay. I don't think I will <laughs> primarily. I will want to stream my regular games, so I don't have to tell a story with right. it from 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 start to end. So right. I can simply Stuff. go on doing my regular games, and then when we get to the end of the time, then we simply say, okay, we end this session here, and we pick it up the next time, so to speak. So, so that is that's basically mostly up to my players if they want to, and I think they all seem to enjoy it so 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 that is very likely that we that could be my, my regular games could be streamed so to speak so that that is highly highly awesome. likely yeah mm -hmm. okay i know we're, we're winding down here uh, um so let me bring up the, the this uh which you probably haven't heard about and uh, getting malvin to play and a bunch of other people uh last year eric was part of this game um we ran the uh, fundraiser last year, There Be Dragons, and we raised $20,500. Wow. Right? For, for St. Jude last year, over a whole bunch of streams over three days. How the hell are we going to, how the hell are we going to beat that this year? So here's my idea. We got three days of streamers. We're going to put together an event, and we're just going to call it Legends. 
I'm going to invite every single big name I know to play in a bunch of games. Everyone here, Ed Greenwood, Jeff Grubb, Jim Ward, I'm going to ask them all. Ooh. Larry Elmore, Darlene, we're going to ask, and we're going to put you all in all these events, and we're just going to run it for three days. And I think, what do you think about that idea? Cool. Do you like I'm it? Yeah, you I'm like fine. it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe will that will that maybe get us past twenty grand this year? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping. Yeah, and Elmore gave us six signed prints last time. Oh, wow. Yes, for for St. Jude. I'm assuming he'll do the same thing, and we'll have all these other great donations and stuff. But that's my idea. So, Dennis, would you play in that one shot? I, I might. I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't you've been out I mean, how can, you haven't done it for four hours. Yet. How can you how can you turn down an invite to play with with real legends? <laughs> that's it. Well, you're a legend too, man. And no, I'm not. Oh yeah, I'm not. not so like perhaps Eric. perhaps the challenge, the gauntlet challenge. to be thrown here, Ooh, is whether we can entice Mister. Holian. Oh, oh yes. Table yes. in the name of charity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. And here's another thing, Eric. Maybe you DM an event and I can stream it. Oh, you remember play it? Yeah. Oh, boy. People will be like, he doesn't know how to play. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you're like, I'm, I'm just wrong. getting some ideas. Uh, well, well, here's the thing, though. I mean, I'm happy to do whatever you want. I'll do anything for the channel, I think, as you know. Thank but, you. But. Mm -hmm. How does puppets fit into this? <laughs> I, was told, I was told that there would be puppets at some point. If you think puppets, yes. If you think puppets, you wanna, are, it's over twenty thousand dollars. If you want to do here's the puppets. thing. I don't want. Uh, look, I don't. I think only uh, the unified power of all of Greyhawk's legends across the world can bring in the kind of money we would want, right? So, okay. like, no one piece of the component no one person no one game is going to push it over the edge it's the unify it's the community yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. right so but so in some ways it doesn't matter but but when it comes to puppets i just want to lay down some <laughs> ground rules because i it's not that i don't want to run a game like puppets <laughs> it's that i feel it's important that a, a module I mean, a module that you would be willing to hang on your wall, Jay. I feel like <laughs> that module deserves to be part of the 30-plus year continuity of your, your campaigns. So I think it's imperative that you run puppets and weave okay. in the Knights of Ulick and all that. Because it's just, I mean, it's foundational. Great. <laughs> and I think it's really important that all you right. have a home. Run. I mean. But I will. Whatever you want me to do. Yes. Uh, I, uh, that's a, there's as a long as you run puppets. I can run me. puppets, yep. man. I can do it. I, I mean, I, we can make that the highlight Saturday night I, event of all time. We'll put I it, think you should ask the chat. It's not just me who wants it. Everyone wants Jay to run puppets, yeah, right, chat? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Saying that, like, Jay, you got to run puppets. We're so oh my excited. gosh. And then it's the community, and this channel is all about responding to yes, the community. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And if it... If it gets us and, over and Jay, just to be clear, this cannot be a side quest. It has to be a central arc of your campaign. Oh my gosh. I mean, I think that goes yes, exactly. Right. No. But thank you very much for the clarification. So we may we may have to do a crossover event between uh you like know, Anna's main character. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. We, we throw in the, the, the two drink yeah. minimum, the slobs and the whole the whole shebang. Yeah. But you know, the great thing about this community is we have look we had three days of live stream events. It almost ran twenty four hours. We had, our our late night streams ran deep into the night. You know, there's probably a four hour window. We had stuff starting at seven a.m. every morning, running constantly all the way up to now. So there's a lot of participation in the community. We need to take advantage of that for to raise some some money. You know, and I, uh, and so keep now it going. now to to tie this idea into. The very first question that you asked at the beginning of, of this stream, were there any areas that you uh, dreaded? And then when a, a couple of us commented, well, as, as DMs who can modify things on the fly, um, is would Jay be required to follow puppets religiously? <laughs> or would he be allowed to tweak it to, to redeem make it? it. 
you need I redeemed to... gargoyle there, so I can redeem puppets. Mm -hmm. I think I don't know, Eric. Oh, Eric might be upset if you're not a purist about puppets. Oh, purist! <laughs> I, I, a certain <laughs> level of purity, I think, is required. Like, I don't think it would be fair to the module to like change the name of an NPC from like, say, Freddy McCruger. <laughs> really, I think that it. The strength <laughs> of it, the, the 30 years behind Jay's campaign. Fair enough. So fair enough. It, uh, yep. uh, an offbeat. Yeah, puppets and outfit. We will. Yeah. That'll, we'll, we'll, we'll weave that in. I don't have any problem with that. Let's, you know, we want this to be the fun, right. most fun, best right. you know, fundraiser. Like I said, every year we got to top the previous year. Mm -hmm. And when we done, we did, I never thought we'd get to, I thought we'd maybe do 15. We got to 20. I was like, holy shit, we did $20,000. What do we do next year? You know, I immediately went there. And, you know, for four years, we've done it. We should, thousand, two, you know, and then it went up to 10 and then just went to 20. So we got to keep it going. Just, I wanted so, to put it out there for everyone. Uh, just because, Jay, I want to also make sure I understand the plans for the future here. So puppets, yes. We've already done gargoyles. There had been some talk of child's play oh. at some point. I think that's great. Just wanted to kind of maybe even like with puppets now confirmed. I think it's time to think about maybe what's next. Now, you know, we've already said child's yeah, plays once, on the docket. Once a year. Yeah. I was hey, thinking, just to throw in this out there, like, feel free, yes, no, it's your call. Of course, it's your team. <laughs> but I think, I think Doom Grinder has got to be. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm doing a rewrite exactly. on Doom Grinder right now. No, 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 no. Okay, you I have you've gone, gone to too it. Yes. far now. You've yeah, even, six, the, we, even Dennis agrees. That is such a, a piece of shit. This, no, Jay, no, 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 but, Jay's words. Not yeah. Oh, my but, gosh. But Jay, you have the set piece for your table for Doom Grinder already. You've shown it off. I know. So, it's like, it, exactly, I thought we were playing a, it before, and I was Exactly. It's a done deal. Look, I have it right here just so i know i'm the, I, I, I can't do it i mean oh yes you can you i am in the to. middle of a greyhawk based adventuring group that i'm rewriting this thing in a big campaign arc and okay All right. yes okay, okay. so that well so you're already doing that as part of the proper yes yeah. but that doesn't mean that we can't i can't have that uh, that part culminate in a, some kind of special fundraiser event or some big time that we're doing something eric that's not a problem but i yeah, just so i we'll keep thinking it through you know, i cannot we, for, i was just workshopping oh man in good conscience i just don't know if i could yep. do it the straight line of doom mm -hmm. <laughs> I, guess, yep. I don't know if i can yeah and i'm not just trying to bash who who wrote this yeah <laughs> mr miller mr. steve miller i'm not trying to bash steve miller i'm not bashing it at all i love that adventure <laughs> oh my god oh man after Altamir box set, yes. So after that's published too, maybe we'll do. We'll run. But puppets is a, is it confirmed? There you go. I gave in to get yeah. this thing going. To get this uh, yeah, legends group yeah. thing going, we could run it during that. That's that's. Yeah. And I, I think I already know awesome. what my uh, stream game for next year's uh, virtual oh, great. Wow, will you're be, out. It will be a goat chase, a goat, a, a zombie goat hunt in in <laughs> Sealands or something. That that oh, will be uh, my new in, in, in introduction into my campaign. I use the zombie goats. And, there, and, there's and then, zombie. There's zombie fa fainting goats, right? Well, yeah, yeah. When you turn them, they don't run. They they oh, go okay. stiff and and roll over. So so, <laughs> and then they come back up again after a while. So 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 that yeah, so you just stun them by turning them. So they're unturnable. Okay, they tip I over. Yeah. You, yeah. Speaking of that, mark these dates down. Virtual Groundcon four first weekend in October, October third to the fifth, twenty twenty three. There we go. Already set. Alrighty. That'll be our wow. fourth time. I know. I, I really appreciate all the kind words everyone said. We've really cranked it out this year. Everyone stepped up. Yep. Let's keep it going for next year. But in the meantime, there's a lot of other things coming up. Fundraiser, Gary Khan, all sorts of other events, all sorts of streamers to support and all sorts of community people to support. In so let, why don't we uh, go through, uh, say some words in closing. I'll get the giveaways going if uh, you guys don't can bolt after the uh, closing marks. Don't need to stick around for the giveaways, or you can hang and talk more about puppets if you so choose, or whatever I've else said is my going. Piece. <laughs> uh, Dennis, what's up? Man? Oh, I have I have nothing <laughs> nothing going uh, at right now. That uh, it's just I'm lucky that I'm here. <laughs> Dennis, too humble, Dennis. Too high. Uh, uh, that's what I was just gonna say. Way too yeah. humble. Way way too humble. But hey. Um, 
note that Dennis, uh, uh, um, please someone link Dennis Malden's site so you can go through all the goodness of, of all the great things he has on there. Greyhawk City, I, specialty priest. Go ahead, go ahead, Alan. Iron Gate. I've been using some of yes. the Iron Gate materials yeah. in my game with my son, so cool. it's been great. Yeah. Absolutely. Some wonderful, wonderful things there. Um, Eric Boyd, what's going on, man? Oh, just doing a lot of writing for the campaign I'm writing, but um, we've also, I've uh, collaborated with George Crashos on a bunch of stuff on DMs Guild. Hey, he's um, on too. Yeah. One, one fun thing recently we did was uh, playing with the Kingdom of Ghouls and tying Greyhawk and the Realms together uh, in terms of the history of the Kingdom of Ghouls as Dora Sane bounced back and forth. So you can find that on uh, the DMs Guild. Very cool. I saw George in chat too, which was awesome. Good to see him. Um, and Eric, thank you. Well, we'll set uh, we'll set the next Ed uh, participation game up uh, in the near future, sometime in November, I'd say would be. Helpful. I can't wait. Yeah, awesome. Maybe this time you won't disappoint me though with oh, the whole you know you want me to survive thing. <laughs> do, do I really want to kill you? You're seventh level you know, now. Eventually, it's gonna happen. You're you're I'm you're, you're Venerium Ward level for specialty priest too. So uh, what, yeah, a of luck. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun time! It's good. That's such a fun group. Uh, both both uh, the special groups I have going on Saturday nights are fun. So let's go, to Alan. Girl, Alan, what is what do you got going? So uh, I've got a new uh, artifact that's going to be published in Earth Journal number thirty-seven which is a uh, brand new creation for Greyhawk called the Book of Eyes. Cool. And it grows out of my, uh, my campaign, uh, one of my campaigns I'm running uh, at home. And it's a, uh, it's kind of a, a collection of divinatory lore. And uh, there's some interesting bits and pieces of backstory and stuff for it that will uh, hopefully find its way into some people's campaigns or inspire some interesting ideas for it. So my understanding from Christoph is that'll be uh, coming out sometime in the next month or so. And that issue will feature Roger Moore's return to the Earth Journal. Oh. With his uh, Gates in the World of Greyhawk number two article. Yeah. Uh, uh, coming to uh, print for the first time, which will be cool, among many other interesting uh, contributions. So, well, that's probably the most fun thing for me in the recent future coming. Uh, where are you going to be vendoring at? Are you going to be going to um, Game Hall? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, uh, game Halls would still love to go, uh, you know, limited vacation, all that. Gary Khan, so definitely next year. Black Blade will be at Gary Khan, and we will be at North Texas again next year okay. as well. Yes. Excellent. Alan, thanks for thanks for coming on too. Really appreciate oh, it. Yeah. Eric Mona. What? Uh, <laughs> I got nothing going on. Uh, except <laughs> if you want to watch uh, me make a fool of myself even worse than I did tonight, uh, you can check me out playing with the Glass Cannon Network. We're doing GURPS right now. We've been doing it the last month or so. And then this upcoming week on Wednesday night on Twitch, there'll be the final episode live. First four are already available on YouTube. It is the calamitous 14th century. So we are playing peasants in the 1300s, just eking by to survive. And every episode is sort of a different generation of the family. So really fun game. Really, really good chemistry with the group. A bunch of really funny people to watch. Uh, it's on Jared Logan's Game Garage show Wednesday nights on the Glass Cannon Network. So go and check it out. Awesome. And uh, and hopefully things are going well. Paizo too. Some yeah, I just finished a budget. <laughs> Super exciting. That's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. The real world stuff always gets in the yeah. way of having fun, the doesn't best. it? Really oh, I finished up an org chart as well recently, which oh. was also a big. That's always exciting. exciting moment for everybody. For <laughs> Eric, no problem. Eric Boyd, no problem. Thanks a lot, Eric. I'll put it. I got to run. Have a good one, Thank man. You, Talk Eric. to you soon. Good night, Eric. Yep. Talk to you soon. Yep. Anna, uh, why don't you talk about some things? Um, I'm going to start uh, the giveaways. I have nine. Oh, All right. Wow. I'm, I'm going to yep. call out the thing. If you don't want it, we'll go to uh, But uh, the first thing we're going to give is the Cave Geek art map or the Infinite Dimensions Games $100 gift certificate. So you get your choice of those two. I can't, if I give you the choice of nine, I call it your name. You're going to be here all night. I'm going to give you the two top ones and we'll work our way down. Okay. 
as Anna is talking about what she's got going on. All right. So yeah, first I'm going to take a couple of days vacation and not turn on my computer for two <laughs> days. And, and, and then on Wednesday, I'm going to, to start thinking about turning my computer on and, and be ready for Legends of Lore. We don't have but a topic for Wednesday. Exactly. Yet. <laughs> we don't have a topic. And right now I can't come up with one. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll wing it. So, so yeah. But, but uh, in a way, I was uh, thinking we should do this kind of a summary and see if there is interesting things coming about the convention. But it might be, I, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see, figure something out for Wednesday. But what I will do is is that there will be some uh, the 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 Iusian zombie goats uh, that were kind of the, the little fun stuff, but they have a more serious side to it than 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 just being funny ones. So so I'm going to to uh, put stat blocks and uh, cool art that they have really good um, uh, art going with them that I've used Mid Journey and Photoshop to create, and I'm really happy with them. And 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 so they are coming to my my mid tier patrons, and then to everybody in about a month. But my mid my mid tier patrons will hopefully get them by the end of the week if I'm lucky if I can recover after Wednesday and, and start doing something useful again and and so that will come I have a, a range of Iusian spells that will come later that because I need to tor torment my my characters and players in my campaign with them first before I let them loose on the rest of the world but I have the it's the pain of the old one and the wall of pain and a bunch of other several other spells I try to have new Iusian spells on every level so to speak so, so that, that's some of the, the campaign stuff that is uh, coming from, from that way. Otherwise, I will be back into Altimira again uh, this week. And then I also have some stuff to do for my top tier patrons, my custom map patrons. So that will keep me busy uh, later this week and a bit into next week. So it will be probably two weeks before I do anything really useful for the general Greyhawk community again, so to speak, but it's coming. It's definitely coming. And this this convention really felt like I was at a convention. Mm -hmm. so even if I was sitting at home all the time, it really feels like I've been at a Gen Con or something. I'm, I'm tired, yeah. But it's been so much fun. All right, so M5, just um, tell me what you want, M5. Do you want the map or do you want the 100-hour certificate to Infinite Dimension Games, a 3D print company, and you know it's all 3D print files. You can uh, that's a lot. So an orchid, uh, then we'll go to you next. So as that's being decided, you got the map, all right? Uh, M5, I I probably have it, but give me your full name and address and whisper, and uh, I got three of them to send out. I'll get them right out tomorrow. I'm working my real job, but you know I can throw fix <laughs> that in sometime too. You know how that oh, yeah. works. Um, what's going on this week? We have a we have a Legends of War Wednesday. I have no idea what we're doing. I have a D&D game Thursday night. I, have, I haven't even started prepping for it yet. <laughs> um, oh, God. We have a special Legends and Lore Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Yeah, that's true. Creighton Broadhurst is finally coming on. Mm -hmm. Cool. And oh, wow. And the li Living Great Hawk on wall. So we're going to have all the Brits on. So it'll be 10 a.m. this upcoming Saturday. The Wednesday after we'll have Legends and Lore, I got a, I got a thing, an out night I, I, I can't get out of, so... Um, so that, that's what's, and then we have, we'll have Gabin next week that I haven't prepped for. So we have four streams next week and I only know what one of them is. So there you go. But just note that yep. this two weeks from, uh, two weeks from last night, this comes up our next special event, the legendary Slav squat squad returns, Mandy bones, darling, Z Zarathon, Josh pop, Myriad, MJ Russell, special guest, AJ of winner's tales all the way from Perth, Australia. Um, she will be joining the Slavs prophecy of the overgourd. A Halloween special event where we have Mike Ooh. Disney's wonderful Reaper Ooh. miniature. Yes. And some new terrain. And uh, I know the group's the worst name ever, but they named it <laughs> Dale. I didn't name them. They named it themselves. So what am I going to do about it? Tell them no. Overgourd. Overgourd. Oh. Yeah, you're talking about the Slav Squad Squad. He's like, that has nothing to do with Greyhawk. So, but what am I going to do? Cool, Chuck. You got it. Um, thank you. And then... Uh, I will get the uh, Orchid. You'll get the $100 gift stick right to Infinite Dimensions games for 3D print purposes, as long as you have access to a 3D printer, which I think you said you did. And we'll keep on going from here. But that's what's going on, everyone. Um, keep on babbling while I get these done, someone, please. Uh, talk more about puppets there, Eric, or something. <laughs> I got to run, actually. See you, Eric. Yep. 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 It was great. Thank you, everybody. We'll be in touch. Yep. Have a good See one. See you later, Bye. Eric. Bye-bye. Right. To... Bye Congratulations on a successful virtual great. Thank you so very much for your participation here. We'll see you next time. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.
So uh, I got I got seven more to go here, and if you, anyone wants to bolt, they're oh, wow. more than welcome to. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, well, I think from a topic point of view, you should have the uh, something on Wednesday about uh, Gary Holy and and uh, the mysteries thereof, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it about Gary himself. Well, Gary's works, perhaps, or whatever. Wow! But, uh, but you could make uh, you could make him a stretch goal for your charity uh, yeah. stream. Mm-hmm. You know, you <laughs> reach X amount of money, and Gary Holian will come on we'll stream and yeah. play. Mm-hmm. Wow! Yep. <laughs> That's... How many Greyhawk fans would donate ten bucks to yep. see Gary Holian come on camera and, and support camera. charity? Yeah, mm-hmm. on camera has to be with yeah. with, with his uh, helmet and horns and everything. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Um, that's a good. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, yeah. Let me know there, Orchid. If you have, if you don't, um, it, it, we're gonna we're hit you up with a, a gift, another gift certificate to uh, um, Troller Games as well, which I'll get to you. Just let me know. All right. Now we'll keep on going with the winnings. I need it. We we do need a topic. Now we have talked about Isle of Dread. Um, we did an Iron Gate one about what a year and a half, two years ago, with Dennis mm-hmm. and and Gary. That was a real good one too. That was a good yeah. one. And Gary actually <laughs> showed. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that Gary character? Yeah, that's a uh, wow. That is uh, that's from that's from Weird Science. Nice one there, Curtis. Uh, Lando, you're up. So uh, Lando, um, do you donate a hundred? Um, there you go. So uh, Lando, let me know if you have, uh, do you have access to a three D printer. If not, or uh, Lando, um, I'm gonna do the. Um, um, yeah, I got four giveaways for three D print stuff. I may have to just no 3D printer. Uh, you got a troller games, uh, Orlando? Do you want the two E books? I'm gonna offer them to you because I know you'll you may utilize them. Do you want the two E book set? They're all reprints. It's up to you. Uh, you tell me, okay? You let me know. All right, we'll keep on going here. All right, got you, Lando. I think I got your address. Um, uh, just put it in whisper for me to make my life a lot easier, please. All right. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm going through this, you know. Uh, and here we go. Next winner. Brackart. Brackart, 3D printer. I'd like to win a 3D printer. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something, uh, um, Dennis. If you haven't seen our stuff, I, I we had 30 brand new Orc slash Orog miniatures on the table that Bill printed all with his oh, 3D yeah? printer and painted them up, and they were awesome. No, it's it's amazing. Uh, it's stuff amazing. That you can do the stuff now that's coming with, up with there now. Printers. You don't yeah, have a 3D right. printer, Brackart. All right, Troller Games ten dollar gift certificate going to you because I have a, I have a lot of uh, 3D print stuff here. Uh, up, uh, um, but uh, Orchid, I got you down for the hundred now. Just make sure that you can utilize that. Um, okay. Topic. Next Ever one. Freely. Tim wants to talk about dinosaurs in D and D. Yeah, he's because <laughs> he's saying that to bust stones. The ever mysterious. Yep. He's you know my friend from. Well, the, interestingly, the the exam that I have to create for this, I I teach a university course on dinosaurs. That's, oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. So, so you have dinosaurs in your Greyhawk, or do you not have dinosaurs in your? Greyhawk? I do have dinosaurs in my Greyhawk. Uh huh. Do you want the um, Hauntwood Mines, Fraley, from uh, Gamescape 3D? The Hauntwood Mines are brand new. I got just got the files today. That whole Hauntwood Mine setup. How about that? All right. Uh, I'll give that to you. That's like a $50 plus value right there. All right. I also have dinosaurs in my basement. So we've got a Triceratops here. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Cool. And this is a... Uh, uh, Almost there. I got one, two, four more giveaways. Oh, look at that. Wow. Very nice. Some of the, some of the things I use in the course. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, dinosaurs are cool. They are cool. They're <laughs> absolutely cool. <sighs> Elsa may... Yeah, I mean, obviously Isle of the Ape has dinosaurs in it. And so. Isle of the Ape and, and, and uh, Isle of Dread, right? Yep. Isle of Dread. Yep. Yep. Elsa may, uh do you have a 3D printer? Okay, um, do you want a $25 gift certificate to Infinite Dimension Games, or do you want the Hauntwood Mines from Gamescape 3D? You let me know of those two. I'm glad to see that we got some 3D printer people out there. Tidarium 7. Mines, gotcha. 
Okay, Alcimain. Alcimain, um, Alcimain and Fraley, I, I need your email addresses to link the drop boxes. Just put them in Whisper for me, too. Tidarium 7, do you have a 3D printer? If not, you'll get a 10-hour gift to give it to Troller Games. We're almost done. And then we will raid into the Darling Creep Show. We can see dinosaurs in Greyhawk. They exist in Greyhawk. They absolutely is, exist in Greyhawk. So, Tidarium, yeah. do you have a 3D printer? The nerd yes. dive is filled with them, according to the encounter tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yes. Tidarium, do you have a 3D printer? Yes. That's the question. Tidarium, do you have a 3D printer? Okay. I'll get, you, get a, you get a Troller Games gift certificate for a digital download, okay? Tidarium 7. I got two. I got, um, actually got, I got one to go here, okay? One to go. And that is 170. One red seventy. Let me know. Do you have a three D printer? If you don't, you have a Troller Games gift certificate. And then we will we will uh, call it an evening. Say uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, you got it. You got a Troller Game gift certificate. One red seventy. Okay, awesome. Give them hell. That's uh, um, lots of fun stuff. Our sponsors, thank you so very much for sponsoring the con. Troller Games, Gamescape three D, Cave Geek Art and uh infinite dimensions games thank you so very much we really appreciate it alan thank you for coming on thank you for dming uh three times during the con three really appreciate that thank wow. you wow that's really awesome do you sleep you <laughs> yeah it's, not this weekend yeah it's, it's been a long weekend for a lot of yep. us yep. absolutely uh dennis thank you for coming on it's always a pleasure thanks for inviting me yeah are always uh, a blast and um, Anna, thank you for everything that you do for the community as well. And thank more than That's anyone fine. else, thank you, community, um, yes. for for uh, uh, just really uh, having fun um, to uh, this entire weekend. Very little issues. Uh, all the streams went off, and everyone really had their act together this year. And we'll be doing it next year. Um, I look forward to it. Um, and I hope, uh, hope uh, keep on uh, keep on participating in the community. Now that the con's over, all the streams that uh, that did stuff, or if you have a DM you like, keep in touch with them. Watch the streams, participate. You know, uh, keep keep the yeah. keep it going here. So, um, see you all soon. Thank you all. Uh, we're gonna read in the Darling Creep Show. Who played in Anna's game this morning? Sound good? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have a good night. Look at that. We're not super, super late on this one. So, <laughs> am I going to hit the wrong button? Probably. All right. Thanks a lot. Yes. All right, thank you. you. Let me see. I hit the raid up here. Now, Anna knows yes. how to raid on her channel, too. Exactly. I've done it once. <laughs> you did it once. I can do it again. Yep. Raid, raid, raid. Soon I'll speak Twitch, too. You can understand what the heck is going on in chat. Let's get over 100 into Darling, okay? She's painting. She's painting. Looks like her beholder. 110, 115, 120, 125, 126. Awesome. 27, 28, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you Wednesday night. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a topic. Of some sort. I'm going to worry about that tomorrow. Because I'm so beat. Action. Make sure it went in. Okay. Yeah, I see. Uh, there we go. We have right over 129. Yeah, yeah. Yep, she's awesome. It looked like it was above 150 almost. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, uh,